All right, we're live, and uh, welcome back, everyone, to the Fantasy Network. We're in episode six of Chatting with Nuts, and I'm having my very first repeat guest here tonight because, honestly, it wouldn't stop bothering me to come back on the damn show, and I said, fine, Christian, you can come on. We can talk about some things, uh, and yeah, it's Christian from Lost in Discovery. How are you doing, my friend? Good, dude. You're a hard man to get a hold of. I've been bugging you since the last episode every day. When am I coming back on? You keep <laughs> You kept shoving me to the side. And uh, finally, you got some time for me. So it's good. You know, I, I think I can always make time for you, Christian. And, oh. and I'm sure everyone in the chat feels the same way. We got we got a, quite a few people here at the <laughs> beginning, a little more than usual. We got Santi with the hello, hello. How's it going? TW Raven, what's up? I just saw you. Uh, TW Raven just posted a really interesting video. I haven't watched it yet, but it's uh, Vin versus Kaladin. Oh, I did see that. And if Kaladin doesn't win, I'm unsubbing. I'm just telling you now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You know what? That's a tough one. Even it is a tough I prefer one. Kaladin. I don't know, man. Vin's a boss. I think Allomancy is super cool and way cooler than Stormlight. That might not be a popular opinion. No. And it's funny because you know me. I'm not a huge Mistborn fan. Yeah. Uh, but oh, I, I know think, that. I think Allomancy is really, really cool. You know what? Like, <laughs> we're already getting into the nerdy stuff. I love it. But Let's I think go. Allomancy is cooler immediately, but Stormlight has more potential. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, I feel like uh, th there's a limit to Alamancy at some point. Because what, what yeah. are you going to do? You're going to introduce more metals, or you, maybe you can combine more. I, mm. Yeah, I like the whole like espionage side to Stormlight. How you can like uh, change your appearance and stuff. Like that's cool. Yeah, I know. think that's really neat. And another thing is, I don't even know if we've seen Stormlight's final form yet. No, you know what I'm saying? No, no, there's plenty to go. Uh, I don't mean to go into a Cosmere tangent right off in, within two <laughs> freaking minutes of starting the stream, but I just thought about this. But isn't it kind of weird? Like Mistborn's kind of a gloomy setting, and so is Stormlight in a lot of ways, you know, with the storms and stuff. Like, what's up with Brandon? Doesn't he hate sunshine or something? Well, you got Warbreaker. Like, Warbreaker's a really nice okay. place. That's actually fair. and That's I actually like that a really place. good place. Yeah, I, like I that said place. in my review, like, that's the place I'd want to be. If I had to be in a fantasy world, I'll go to Warbreaker. Really? Dude, all the colors, it's nice. <laughs> if you had... I'm not going to the two rivers, dude. Any... <laughs> the wheel is weaving, my friend. So if you could live in any fantasy world, you'd pick Warbreaker's world. Yeah, like the main city. That's, that's actually a pretty interesting question. I think one of the things... like I feel like Roshar is such an interesting place, but you can't live there because of the storms. Yeah, I feel like you I would can't. die. Yeah, you I would can't. die so quick. A lot of people have been dying. Yeah, I'd be well, the guy like fixing the roof, yeah. like getting it ready for the storm, and some lightning would just kill me, and that's it. That's my moment. <laughs> I. This is gonna sound really weird. I think I'd live in Westeros. No, dude, come on. <laughs> what are you talking man, about? <laughs> let me tell you what. You give me my horse, give me my sword, give me my shield. And Jimmy Nuts would be a hedge knight. I'd be going across the fields. I'd be going down to the crag. I'd be going down Dorn. I'd be getting a nice tan. I'd look. I'd look fine. Dude, I'd be you'd chill. be back in the mud so you, quickly. You think it's I'd Westeros? Be, you think I'd go back to the mud? Well, look, you got potential, Jimmy. I'm not gonna lie. You got a lot of potential, and with some with some guidance, maybe. I mean, maybe we need to make this bridge training. <laughs> bridge running video montage yes dude i want the like bridge four training routine and jimmy's like gaz he's like the <laughs> he's like the trainer and i'll be kaladin obviously obviously you were kaladin yeah. on the thumbnail i don't know if you saw that <laughs> am i actually i gave you the blue and i was zeth with the oh. yellow outline it's on the details my friend dude it's all in thank the you for i appreciate that because it's kind of canon that like sando's looking at me to be kaladin for the uh adaptation yeah, it, it sounds like out. a lot of the fan casting that goes on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Henry Cavill plays yeah. every character. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> and uh, Sean Bean is every, like, wise fantasy guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, though, like, uh, no cap, like, Sean Bean could be in any fantasy, and I'd be totally okay with it. If Sean Bean is in a fantasy show, I'm there. I'm watching. He's, it. like, proved himself. He's pretty. I even watched that Frankenstein show he was in, or whatever movie, or whatever. I oh, really? It. Yeah, I don't remember. I've never it. heard of that. <laughs> but it wasn't very good. Did he um, die? By the way, uh, you know what? I can't remember, but we'll say yes. Okay, yeah, we'll say yes. Yeah. It's kind of his thing, you know. I mean, 
Christian, you have fans all over uh, in the chat. A Andrew Pl uh, Plies is saying he's good to see you back on the show. Rebecca says she always misses your streams, but she could not miss this one. Oh, sweet. Hello, everybody. Yeah, I'm glad you're here. And I just want to ask, is, is my mic like the same level as Jimmy's? Because I hate when um the mic levels are different. Well, it's not think... as nice. Well, that's well, that's certainly obvious. But like we all know I sound better. But like, what's my volume like? <laughs> Let's see what they're saying. I, I feel because uh... <laughs> I can I can mess with that. Um, People uh, started weighing in on the uh, on the Alamancy talk uh, tw oh, really? whose video it is by the way if you want to see kaladin versus vin go check out tw's video uh they posted today you're limiting it too much almancy is one of three it's the metallic arts three and one fair point yeah i see what he's saying that's, that's yeah like there is a lot yeah yeah because you've got yeah well we can't really talk about the others but yeah oh wait there's there's my mother hello mother good to see you <laughs> story bound good to see you story bound stormlight seems in its infancy everything is new to people yeah yeah like it seems like it's about to go through a big change like we won't get into it but it's going to go through a change for sure i i like this here sando just recommended project hail mary because it's a super positive outlook sci-fi so, so he writes depression <laughs> and positivity i think that that's pretty important to balance did you see life. about sanderson sorry to interrupt but did okay. you see like his latest video uh, reviewing it? yeah he's no, he's, he's coming into our space dude we've got no chance now listen, he's doing book reviews. Listen, Brandon. All right, you already <laughs> took you already took the 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 Fortnite space. You've already taken up all the bookshelves. Every time I walk in, there's like a hundred of your damn books. Leave the reviewing alone. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that, that's that's actually give awesome. us something. There's give like us some avenue. There's nothing I like more than hearing like an established author's thoughts on other people's writing. Uh, no, you know, I think it's great. Yeah, I think yeah. I think it provides a whole different you know aspect to a review so that's actually really cool I, I i do have that on my watch later list that i'm gonna check it out yeah for sure like i i'm it's so like he's one of a kind hey like in terms of transparency and interaction there's no one else in fantasy really he's a yeah. good guy yeah i mean marketing fan interaction i mean he, here's the thing i said in my way of king's video um there is probably no one in the fantasy genre to be a uh, like it's better to be a fan of than Brandon Sanderson. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, like you or anybody who's like, I mean, in my, I mean, my God, you get a book every year. I mean, it's as as rewarding as it possibly could be. Yeah, and for a lot of people, it's probably the only author that they read, and that's enough. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And, and uh, I actually talked about this a little bit uh, yesterday in uh, Rid's Discord. Uh, there was like a little voice chat going on while I was making a thumbnail for this. I was talking. But, you know, one thing about Brandon, I think a lot of people underestimate is the fact that you can grow up reading his works. Hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying like he, yeah. you can grow with Brandon as he writes because he does have the YA stuff. He has some graphic novels like he has things to get you there. Like, for instance, when I bit off Mistborn. I felt like I would have liked that book a lot more if I had been a little bit younger, to be honest. I'm not saying it's only for young people or anything like that, but yeah. I'm just saying for me, I was like, oh, if this had just been a little bit more of a mature theme, maybe I would have really got into it. Now, there is some dark stuff in there. Don't get me wrong. The violence yeah. is pretty obtuse. But, um, you know, when I read Stormont, I said, oh, this is like his step. You know what I mean? Like mm. it felt a little more adult to me. And I just think that that's a, a really big value as a fantasy author and like a conglomerate uh, of the genre where you can start reading him very young and then grow into his works. Like that's huge. Yeah, he's got it down, man. Like, he's got the whole thing yeah. planned and organized. And I feel like, same with Mistborn, like, even though I liked it much more than you, mm -hmm. if I read Mistborn when I was, like, 17, 18, it would probably have a... Oh. I would probably, like, like it way more. And then, like, in my 20s, I would pick up Stormlight and it would be, like, you know, perfect. Yeah, and then you have the nostalgia factor. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Like going back and try to read Aragon now would be very hard. But if you read Aragon when you were a kid, I think most people could probably admit the shortcomings <laughs> with that series. Maybe like Narnia is a better example, right? Yeah. Like I yeah. Know people that love Narnia still, you know. I didn't read Narnia. Like I liked I liked the um movies because I was like swords are cool mm -hmm. and other world portal vibes. That's fun. I like that. And uh, I always picture Trollocs as like the enemies in Narnia, by the way. Oh in really? the movie. <laughs> like the Minotaur guys, but I don't think they look like that. Nah, I don't think so. I think I Trollocs are more like almost bird-like in some instances, you know? Yeah. I don't know. They're like a weird thing. I, I really enjoy um, 
a lot of the word choice that C.S. Lewis does. I've read all of it. Uh, I've only read bits and pieces, but uh, he seems like a fantastic writer, something I'd like to go back and read. Also, his Dark Materials is like another one people read a lot when they're younger. That Yeah. Uh, it still ends up in their top five list, even if they have read better stuff. And I just think Brandon's like set himself up to do that with a whole generation of readers. And it's going to he's like, he's only going to get bigger. I mean, he could end up being the biggest author in the fantasy genre of all time. I think he will be honestly yeah. like with the amount of success he has now and with the Fortnite collaboration. <laughs> but like, you know what I mean? It's just getting started. Yeah. And I feel like we're in like the Marvel like 80s in the comics era and like eventually all the movies and the franchise is going to get so big. I think it's just going to be massive eventually. Anyway. I agree with you. Actually, that that I'm going to bring this point back up uh, in just a moment because I have some questions. I, I want to ask you about that. Oh, uh, yeah. I think the Cosmere is more than we think uh, so far, but I did see some people talking about where they'd like to live and I thought it would be kind of cool to highlight some of these. Stuart said he'd oh. like live in Dresden, Chicago, and I kind of like that answer. Like is Dresden Chicago modern day Chicago? I so I haven't read Dresden, but from what I understand, it's just urban fantasy in whatever time period was written in that Chicago. And then right. there's magic. And I kind of like yeah. this answer because we have some pretty cool places here on Earth, folks. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> uh, I, you know, Christian's part of the world over there is pretty nifty, I think. Yeah, it's cool. And if you just could go don't with... touch animals, then you'll be <laughs> fine. <laughs> I mean, they're almost. Uh, they're almost like fantasy creatures in a way, right? They're very dangerous and mysterious and nobody wants oh, yeah. to, nobody wants to touch them. Makes sense. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It is kind of like a fantasy world to be it honest. Is. I mean, that's why they shot Lord of the Rings there, right? Yeah. Well, New Zealand, I guess Whatever. close enough. Close Whatever. enough. I always, I actually always in my head, I'm always like, is he from New Zealand or Australia? I always forget. <laughs> I'm a citizen of the world, Jimmy. I think I'm they're from all places. They're on the same continent though. Or is it, is that still disputed? Like New Zealand and Australia. Yeah, I think it's just it's like it's like uh, some people say Australia is a continent, but then I'm like, what's New Zealand part of? Yeah, I think a lot. The theory is is that New Zealand was a part of another uh, piece of a continent that broke off and has oh. since went down. And actually, a lot of people feel like that might be a connection of why we've seen like different types of people like throughout history. Like, why are these bones here? It would have been oh. like in continents. Now, I'm pretty sure that's <laughs> not substantiated by research. At all. <laughs> yeah, because it, it takes a while for a land video. mass. Yeah, no, just <laughs> yeah. ignore that. Actually, um, the aliens um, terraformed oh, New Zealand. They did the and, pyramids, and then they yeah. said, this is where Lord of the Rings will be shot. We need to make sure it looks good. Yeah, Hobbiton was already there. They just had to dig it up, and they were like, oh, my God, we've got well, to set. Lord of the Rings is actually, uh, it's, a, it's real. Uh, Middle <laughs> Earth is the hollow Earth. In, yeah in the center, if you didn't yeah know. yeah uh, santi says i'd love to live in wheel of time universe just to hang out with nynaeve she would box my ears every day but i don't care <laughs> that's pretty funny that's pretty good and noel hey noel what's up uh noel actually uh has been a part of my channel for a very long time and i i love hearing noel's thoughts noel just started her booktube channel and christian can attest this everyone's first video is usually really bad I think Noelle's first video is actually really good. And yeah, I, I agree. I yeah, agree. it's actually really good. And I think that uh, she is kind of a, in a different category because of that. And when you start out with that high note, you're only going to get better at this. So show some love and give Noelle a subscribe. I, 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 I or subscription. So we'll say subscription. Give her a subscription. Yeah. Check her out. She's going to be posting more videos in the future. Uh, and I think that uh, she has a lot of stuff that's pretty interesting to say. So I think you would enjoy that if you were to. Um, if you were to hop on over there. Yeah, we're in like a booktube renaissance right now. A yeah. lot of good channels cropping up. You know, just like they we're scratching the surface with the Cosmere. We're yeah. uh, <laughs> we're scratching the surface with booktube. We're era two of booktube. Listen, easily. Now, now, no disrespect to these 2021 booktubers, but Christian, the class of 2020. The class of 2020 is legendary. I'm not going to lie. The class you know, there are so many channels that did so well. We all started within like six months of each other. There was something and in the air and it wasn't COVID. No, <laughs> I mean, it was in the air, but we weren't tapping oh. into that. We'll tap into something else. Yeah, yeah. I stayed inside. Yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't have fresh air for like a year. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, man, the class of 2020 booktubers is, you know, you remember the draft class? I had like Dante Culpepper, Peyton Man. This is a sports. No one's no one's following me. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. You just it's, lost everyone. <laughs> it's it's diggity stacked. It's it so is stacked, stacked bro. Let's let's, let's got, go over this. Let's go over this. First off, me. 
Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> you got you got Dude. the first in class. Me, yeah, okay. beefcake. <laughs> Book beef. two, beefcake. Book two, day beef. one. <laughs> All day, every day. All right, yeah. <laughs> and then we have Christian from Lost in Discovery. You may have heard of him. I'm not sure. I'm uh, doing okay. You got Philip Chase. Yes. Oh my god, the professor of the, booktube. Yeah, the professor. Also, by the way, congratulations on 10,000 subscribers. Oh, thanks, dude. Thank um, you very much. I just think that is so awesome. And and you're still criminally underviewed. Uh, but when I when I see you reach those kind of milestones, it makes, you know, to see someone like you hit those milestones makes me know that I'm going to surpass that easily. Uh, oh. No. <laughs> Absolutely. Only, it's only a matter of time before you rocket past me. <laughs> no, I'm only, I'm only jesting. Uh, you know, you put in a lot of effort with your videos and to see uh, that hard work pay off and like the quality of your content. Like I was telling you before we went on, like you legitimately, one, you inspire me to make better content, but also uh, your videos always come away learning something and I get really fired up about the Cosmere, which, which I think is awesome. So uh, kudos to you, my friend. Thanks, yeah, man. I, I I try to hype up the Cosmere as much as I can, even though it's like hard to hype up something you're like talking about all the time because you get kind of burnt out. But when I make a big Stormlight video, I, I want to like really sell it because even though it's massive, it's still tiny. You know what I mean? Like yeah. in the grand scheme of things. So. Yeah, I, I think I think uh, the, the ceiling is extraordinarily high for you. And especially with the things that we're talking about. I mean, literally the first thing I thought about when I saw the, you know, we can just go into it. Let's just talk about it. So if you're not yeah. aware, which you probably are, Fortnite has officially released <laughs> a mist born skin of Kelsier. Now you probably know the details a little better than I, uh, I've only, I just saw the picture of the skin and knew it happened. I thought it was really cool. It looks really good by the way. I thought, that Oh yeah, cool. it looks great. It, are they doing any other Mistborn skins or is yeah. it specifically Kelsey or only? They're doing more. So like he he knows the game director at Fortnite, of course, because he's bloody Brandon Sanderson. And he wrote like he wrote novels for like a Epic Games like mobile game. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's called Infinity Blade like years ago. Yeah. Um, so he had contacts there. And um, I think his kids wanted to get at one of their dances in Fortnite or something like that. <laughs> And then that guy was like, hey, why don't we get Kelsier in, Miss, uh, in uh, Fortnite? And Sanderson's like, cool. And he said the deal they signed is for um, Vin and Kelsier. Uh, they, but they haven't like started work on Vin yet. But the, he said to expect Vin in like six months or so. Well, that's really cool because, I mean, that gives a, uh, you know, a reason for the people to come back. Um, now, I do not play Fortnite. Um, but I know you did, right? Like I've dabbled. I've dabbled with Fortnite, you know, because like we're gamers right so if a game gets that big we're inclined to check it out yeah you know? i checked so it I out you know and got beat and called an idiot by you know an eight-year-old and I, I logged out and i said that that was fun that was a yeah. lot of fun yeah like there is a lot that's good about it like it's a, it's a very polished game because there's like billions of dollars going into it uh it's not, not like a game i play often but often enough to be like all right i'm gonna get a kelsey skin so when i do log on i can be like a mistborn obviously um and it was cool. Like you're, it's like you can do stupid dances as Kelsey, which is kind of like a meme. But like beyond that, it's just like whatever. You know, it's just a bit of fun. Yeah, I mean, seeing Kelsey on a screen interacting in a world, no matter what it is. is yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's hard to explain the ripple effect that this could have. Not, yeah. just, I mean, obviously for the Cosmere and for Brandon Sanderson's pockets, but also for just fantasy in general. I mean, how many of us got into fantasy for something that was very marketed, uh, you know, towards us in pop culture, Game of Thrones. Um, I would even say, you know, um, obviously Lord of the Rings, but I was going to say Chronicles of Narnia. And then you yeah. start there and then you jump off. Yeah, exactly. Like we're, we're all on our high horses now being like, look at my collection. But, yeah. you know, we, we got here in weird ways mm. and maybe people get here through a Fortnite skin. You that, know, that's what that's I'm saying. Cool. It, it's yeah. encouraging. Uh, and even though it's not a it's like not my favorite series or anything like that. It's so fun to watch people get excited about things. It's so and cool. Yeah, I, I'm pleased to see that not a lot of people are being super negative about it, because like Fortnite's obviously a game that's pretty polarizing. Like it's obviously successful, yada, yada, yada. But there are people like the crap on it, right? Like they, they like yeah. the fun of the game, whatever. And I just think it's cool that even people are like, oh, I don't have any interest in Fortnite. You know, but this is awesome. It's just like there's like a lot of positivity around it. And I really like yeah. that because it's mostly positive. 
which is it, good. Yeah, it doesn't have to always be for you. You know what I mean? Like this isn't yeah. th this was not an announcement that was for Jimmy Nuts. Like I didn't sit there and go, yeah. oh man, I, I can't. But I was so elated to see people like you and my other friends that you know really like Miss Born. Uh, and I I don't have any friends that like love Fortnite, but I'm sure there were people who were just excited me neither. About it. Like we're just like there are adults that play it, but it's definitely like a kids yeah. dominated uh, market. Um, but and it's yeah. Sorry, it's, go on. No, it's perfectly uh placed because that crowd is i mean mistborn's perfect for the for those people i think yeah like you were saying you wish you read it when you were younger and yeah. it's a great starting point um yeah. and he said it like he even said on reddit he's like i know there's not much crossover here between my fan base and fortnite but it's just a fun thing i wanted to do like it's just he had he's like i hope it brings people in but that wasn't the aim i just thought it'd be cool to get kelsia in oh, a yeah. game because it's cool like that's it yeah, and, um, and I think that's one of the things. It feels like Brandon's always having fun. Yeah, yeah, that bastard <laughs> having fun and getting p -p 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 paid, <laughs> getting making fat stacks, cheddar yeah. all day, <laughs> all day. Uh, Nathan says he loves Christian channels. Thanks for the amazing videos. Thank you, dude. It's pretty Thank nice. Thank you very much. Uh, and San uh, Santi says, Jay from Caption Words makes some really great videos. He is not new, but damn, I am always amazed by quality. Yeah, Caption Words is like. He's on another level. Yeah, it's he's like here. Yeah, he's crazy. To me, the fact like me and Chris were talking about this before we went live, but like Alt Shift X to me is like the Omega. Oh, my God. When I think of like number two. I think of myself. No, I'm just kidding. I think of Captain <laughs> and Words. Don't, um, I really don't do. you dare tell yourself short, Jimmy. <laughs> You're number one. You know, you and Captain <laughs> Words make these amazing videos, and I feel like it's just like a totally different lane. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to create like an atmosphere. Yeah. Um, not like we're obviously, I, don't, I can't speak for Jay. Like I've never actually had a conversation with him, but like mm -hmm. feels like as, as much as we're trying to like push a theory or like give information, we're just trying to create almost like a cinematic kind of vibe throughout so yeah there's that aspect to it yeah and i think specifically with youtube and then you turn it to booktube right people aren't as adverse to sitting down and being educated about something if they're invested yeah. in it yeah you know yeah what i mean like for instance i find uh world war ii to be very interesting uh pretty much anything uh mesopotamia all that good stuff but if you put me in a time period in history class like if you force me like you know, it's <laughs> cool to like learn about uh, this is a bad example because I actually do find it kind of interesting. We'll just say the, we'll just say the tutors. I, I think the tutors era is pretty interesting, but let's just say I didn't like it. It's like hard for me to digest that material. But these like these people are coming to your videos, Jay's videos, like they want to be more educated in this fandom. Yeah. And I think it's just so awesome that we have an outlet to do that. And it's like a new age of of seeking out education. Uh, obviously it's for a fandom in a fantasy world, but it still counts, right? Like you're still relaying information in a way that's very digestible. Yeah. That's the thing. And like you, you think about that. Cause if like my searching for the ending series, yeah. I know I basically have no limitations on how long I can make those videos. Cause I know people will generally stay. Um, yeah. But if I'm like, why you should read something or like introducing, I got to keep it real snappy mm -hmm. because people don't care. Like, you know, they care enough to, to check it out, but you got to, like, fly through information. But I can talk about, like, a random dog in bloody Stormlight for 40 <laughs> minutes and people will be like, all right, what's he got to say? I guess you I'm, I guess I'm uh, settling down for the next 40 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I think that's one of the things I struggle with um, being more. I, I like, you know, I just talk the books and I usually just kind of relay what my emotional response was to the book and my overall excitement for it, yada, yada, yada. And I think that's one hard thing um, about what I am trying to do is it's hard to keep people there for the whole 18 minutes of talking about a book because at the end of the day, you're talking about a book. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, no, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. There's a lot of people that check out uh, if they hear something they don't like. You know what I mean? Um, it's hard. It's hard. Yeah. And you see it on the bloody analytics. It like shows you when everyone left. You're like, yeah, right there. I, they got I don't bored. like I don't like made up swear words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Mine's yeah, like, as soon as I get to my outro and I'm about to say um, thank you and check this out. It's like pff, everyone late, leaves, which is exactly what I do as a viewer as well. So I can't makes you wonder, you know. should you even have an outro? Well, there is like a 30%, you know, there's a 30% chunk who are there for that. So, yeah, 
because where else am I going to like plug my merch that I don't have? You know, <laughs> you got to sprinkle it in. You got to. Yeah. I hate that though because they're like Express VPN right when it's about mm-hmm. to get to the good stuff, and I just keep skipping. You know. Yeah, they're like, and Ned Stark was a pigeon. And the reason why is, well, real quick, our, uh, you know, NordVPN uh, browsing yeah. history is very important. Uh, you know, they all they all do it. They all. Do yeah. It. I mean, it's just part of the YouTube game. We're just too small for that. Like, yeah. I'm sure soon enough someone can edit this alongside me. Bloody advertising uh, Squarespace. Oh, I'm definitely going to do that to you. Oh, do it. I'll be down do here it, with my, my measly three, four K subs while you're up at hundred K. Like I used to know he used to be cool, man. I don't talk to Jimmy anymore. He's just, you know, Christian changed, <laughs> bro. <laughs> he doesn't make videos on Stormlight anymore. You know, Christian sold out. <laughs> yeah. I sold out. Yeah. Sold I only out. talk about, I don't, how do you sell out on booktube? What do you do? I have no idea. I think he, mm, never mind. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Swiftly yeah, moving on to the yeah. next topic. We're not going <laughs> to shoot any shots or anything. All right, Christian has so many good Stormlight Archive theories. There are so many things I don't understand until I watched his, or I didn't understand until I watched his videos. Big same, Rebecca. Uh, like, I legitimately, first off, me and Christian are very good friends. Like, I talk to Christian almost every single day. Uh, but I watch his videos as a fan still. Like, I don't just watch him because he's my friend. I watch it because I'm a huge fan of his work. That's beautiful, man. I'm, I'm like, I just, it's, it's hard, right? Because once we start talking, it's like, you start viewing the like um, videos differently. Cause I'm like, I care what Jimmy has to say, but I like, what did he do with the lighting setup this time? Oh, nice. There's <laughs> okay. lights he bought. They look good. The, there you know? is a technical aspect of like, oh, it's a new shot because you know, a lot of times uh, viewers will appreciate that kind of thing, but they don't necessarily know why they appreciate what the change is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Cause when you're making it, you see everything different. I'm like, oh he put that in the title. He's trying to get that those people to watch. Or like he did that with a thumbnail. Okay. Like, you know, it's we so, see that the YouTuber side. Yeah. Or, you know, you'll see my setup. Like I, I generally have the same background in most of my videos because I, I think it works. But people I think, oh, that's probably really easy. Just flips on the lights and goes. Like, no, it's like an hour of me like moving the lights like <laughs> two centimeters. And, and for what? <laughs> for what? Because just to get that beautiful shot. Just my to show friend. off my big five head, just like making <laughs> sure that the light hits right here. You need that sheen on top. Yes. You know? I start sweating. And I've done that so many times, dude. Like I mess around with a setup for like hours and then I just end up where I started and I'm like, bloody hell. <laughs> and no one knows. Nobody knows. T W Raven says also oh. BookTube class of 2021 will usher in the <laughs> new age of BookTube for the decade. But that goes without saying, of course. <laughs> Look, 2021, you know, no shade towards 2021, but what sounds better, 2020 or 2021? You yeah, know what I mean? We, we we got you all through the pandemic, <laughs> okay? You guys are in a post-pandemic world making video. Everyone's happy, okay? Dude, know. we need a versus video, class of 20 versus 21. That's you know, and we're still early in the year. That I'm sure yeah. there's some people working on videos right now that are just going to, that are going to crush. I think it, but... You know, and also to kind of reiterate back on what you're talking about, I just think it's really cool that in BookTube, there are so many different lanes you can be in. Yeah. Like me and yeah, you are in so totally different, different lanes, right? Yeah, we are. But we like intersect nicely. You yeah. know, there's a bridge between yeah. our lanes, but some lanes don't intersect whatsoever. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's probably niches within the BookTube community that I'm not even aware of. So, yeah, like, you know, there's like, the me and Jay captured in words vibes. And then all the other end of the spectrum is like the reading vlogs and like the um, reading, sprints. you know, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Reading sprints and like TBRs and all that stuff. Like we don't touch that. I think he's done some TBRs and stuff, but like our big selling point is not that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you're like the discussion guy. You're like the long form discussion dude with yeah, like, I'm like philip chase and all them yeah i'm like a broke version of philip chase yeah <laughs> I'm like the back you're the philip you're chase. the every man's philip chase philip chase is like expensive you know like i feel like i should be paying to watch his videos honestly <laughs> like i actually do i'm like this feels really like i'm getting away with something 
He's yeah. ineligible. I always end up like I, I never watch Phillips reviews for something I haven't read because I don't want to repeat through osmosis because when Philip <laughs> reviews something, I want to tell more people about what I learned from his videos. So like yeah, I never yeah, want to yeah. bite off of what he said. So I always have to like wait to watch his reviews. That's it. I do that a lot in general mm -hmm. on booktube. I try not to watch what people have said about other things because you just like you don't mean to, but it's like in your head now. Um, they might say something that you didn't realize until then, and then you say it, and it looks like you, it, it comes across like you're just copying. Yeah, you, um, ne you never want to do that. Yeah. So I tried. I try to like if I'm gonna make a video on some like a review on something, especially I don't watch other reviews. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm generally the same way. There's been a couple books that I've been on the edge about hmm. uh, that that I'll watch something or if it's something that I, I feel like I have no interest in in, the, in like the um, immediate future, I'll, hmm. I'll check it out. Or if it's like a really like Dune, like if I see a Dune review, I'm going to I'm going to watch a Dune review. Yeah, because it's Dune. It's just like bigger. It's like bigger than most things, you know, yeah, hearing more I didn't about watch it. a single Rhythm of War review before I did mine. No, oh, no, I lied. I lied. I actually did watch Daniel Green's and I remember like agreeing with him a lot. And I was like, mm. and I, I actually brought it up in the review. Now that I remember, I said, like, I never watch reviews. I watch Daniel Green's. And I agree. <laughs> and, I, and I was just like, at the end, I was just like, God, that's so lame. Like, like I watched that. I watched Daniel's and Murphy's because they got the book early. And mm -hmm. like, obviously, I want it like I couldn't, you know, the hype for Rhythm of War was crazy. So yeah. I had to hear what they thought. But I didn't even do a review of them before. Like I wasn't really doing reviews. I just did like but your because I, videos were really cool. Yeah, I just thought discussing it would be more fun because mm -hmm. even now I'm not necessarily necessarily the review guy, and especially for the Cosmere, my reviews are going to be pretty like not useful. You know, I think I, people would just rather think of like know what I think of it rather than like recommending it because I'm obviously like I'm in too deep now. Well, yeah, you know? yeah. It uh, you know, I think you bring up a pretty good point. There's a very different, even though it, it's small and it's semantics, there is a difference between like reviewing for a recommendation and then reviewing it for your personal thoughts. Yeah. And I think my style, when you watch my video, sometimes I will say I recommend things. Like at the end, I try to say like whether I recommend or something or not, but like it's so hard because it's all subjective anyways. But for me, it's all about like my personal experience, like kind of how you did with the, uh, with the parts in Rhythm of War. I really like that. Now, I generally don't break it out in parts, but that is how I mm. will end up going over a book. Like like any Hob book I read now, like I'm obviously going to like it, right? Yeah. Like you don't need yeah, to exactly. know yeah. whether or not I'm going to recommend the Tawny Man trilogy. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like to think that people would like to see why I felt the way I did about whatever book I'm talking about, right? Yeah. yeah. And I feel like my channel was still really new at that point. So like, now we've got a bit of a like a, a following so like they get a sense of what we like that's we've got enough videos so you get an impression of what we're into mm -hmm. so then when you talk about something they can be like oh jimmy's like this this and this so i'm keen to see how how he reacts to whatever yeah um but i th i think the parts thing for rhythm of war was good because everyone was hyped it's a big ass book you know some people might take a week some people might take a month so i thought you know, this is a way to keep people like to checking in as they go through it. And it was a good way for me to break down my thoughts because it's just too much to like, I wouldn't be yeah. able to film after a thousand pages and get all my thoughts done, you know? Yeah. One of my favorite podcasts is uh, the Bend the Knee podcast. I've had both guys on here before, but like one of my favorite things about them is, you know, they do a chapter a week for a song of ice and fire mm. and, be, and I, a song of ice and fire lends itself to being read that way. But it is really nice. It's like you could do that with the Rhythm of War, even honestly. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe I mean, there's a lot of uh, podcasts, but you could, you could. Yeah. I guess what I'm saying is, is like I like hearing people's thoughts in the micro a little mm. bit more than the macro, and I wish yeah. I did more of that because there's so many times where like pieces of a book have an impact on me, but the overall book it, it's so dense that I end up kind of like forget, not even forgetting, but like I can't spend it too much time. Yeah. And that's why I'm going back to make those Stormlight videos because there are little things that I will want to delve into more. And I think people, like after a certain amount of time, people get the general idea of a book. You know, yeah. they're like, oh yeah, Words of Radiance is the best one and it's because of this, this, and this. But it's like, but what about the stick? Is the stick a war? <laughs> what about stick? <laughs> yeah. We and people, in the end, we want to meme on everything. 
or theorize. Like that's kind of what it comes down to. Yeah, and who knows? Um, maybe me and you will do some uh, cool project in the future that involves stick yeah. and many other things. Yeah, Matt. Any, you know, I don't know if people are ready, but I'm certainly ready. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> it'd be it'd be a big project, uh, and it'd be a lot of fun. Uh, it's easy to learn about the Cosmere if you're already invested in it. Get it invested. Mm. I'll, okay, <laughs> TW, that was solid. That was solid. That's that's a you know it's a class of 2021 vibe. I love yes, it. it's very 2021 <laughs> no. of you. No, he's great. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoy his videos a lot. Uh, Nathan says, what is everyone reading right now? Christian, what are you reading? Oh, funny you asked that. Pull it up. Have, Let's go. This beautiful book. Look at oh, it. Those oh, those UK covers, my friend. Oh. oh, Joe Abercrombie is a glorious man. And I love this book so much so far. It is, I think it's going to knock, uh, knock off best surf gold is my favorite. I think it's going to keep happening as I go through, you know, it's yeah. so, it's so good so far. Um, I'm reading that and I'm reading one piece, but, um, the heroes is like the battles are just starting. If you guys don't know, it's like, a it's a novel set in the first law world and it's, it's meant to be a standalone, but it isn't like it continues the story directly after the other books and there's a three-day battle about to take place over a stupid hill that doesn't really matter and uh you got your classic first law characters being amazing yeah know? and it, it has huge implications in the first law world and even going into the new trilogy so i'm really excited oh yeah i can see how this is going to set the stage completely yeah. the outcome of this battle you know outside of the og trilogy i've been really wanting to reread uh the og trilogy i think the book that i would like to reread the most out of first law is actually the heroes really okay yeah I, and and i loved it when i read it 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 has a chance to be my favorite of the standalones i kind of go back and forth um I, with I best of cold, cold? No, I actually like red country which is funny because everybody hates mm. red country but yeah i, I like the care i liked You'll see. <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> yeah. But the heroes, man, what what a book. What a oh, book. dude, I'm loving it. And it's actually already making me want to reread um, the <laughs> original trilogy because so many side characters are main characters now. Yeah. And you really want to go back like Bethard's sons and stuff. Mm -hmm. I want to read from like Calder. I want to pick up on what he was like in uh, the first law trilogy now. Yeah. Because I know he was in it and mm -hmm. uh, the other son too. Um like oh, really man. early on. What's his name? What's his other son's name? Calder sure. and uh, Scald or, or Scale. Is it Scale? Scale. It's Scale. Yeah. Yeah. Scale. Yeah. He's yeah. like, is which one does Logan piss off really early on in uh, the Blade itself? Scale. It's one of them. It's yeah, because he's like the angry one, right? He's yeah. the hard ass. Um, yeah. <laughs> Calder's the brainiac. Yeah. Calder's the Jamie. No, not Jamie Lannister. Like he's like Experience. the pretty boy, you know. Yeah, he but he fight. but he's also like the witty one. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I I think yeah. First law lends itself to rereads because of that, and I love how Abercrombie doesn't let any characters go to waste. Like if you survived in the world, you're probably going to be featured in some of the like one of. And the it's novels. so great! It's so great! Like it's making me appreciate the trilogy now more than yeah. I did, because it's like oh, this all really did mean something, you know? Because I really thought it was a shut off trilogy, but like um somebody said in the chat miguel it's like asking are they actual sequels yeah they it's just it's just a long ass series i yeah. think it's mismarketed in some ways i agree with you um, I, because I, people I don't it. realize you told me you're like this isn't like gonna be a 10 book series mm -hmm. and i was like what these are standalones but it's actually continuing it like directly so mm -hmm. i don't i guess they wanted to bring people in you know with the standalone uh yeah selling point yeah, and I think it also is just one of those things where I don't know if Joe knew that he was going to continue writing First Law. Like, I I think at any point, any of those uh, standalones could have been the end of First Law. I see. Okay. So I think maybe it was until they kind of signed him on for the, the last... Like, he kept it going. It was like, I guess I'll just keep doing this until they tell me to stop, right? Mm. Um, but man, yeah, you're, you're in for a treat with that one. I am reading Fool's Fate, which is the third book in the Tawny Man trilogy, and... All the feels, all the feels. Oh, really? Yeah, like, man. like, like emotional crying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have 200 pages left, and it was like one of those things. Like, I can't read this before the live. Like, I didn't read it today because I was like, if I read this today, 
I'm going to be a mess. Like <laughs> it, it, it is one of those things where like I have 200 pages left and there's no way I can stop. So it's like yeah. when I, when I start reading, I'm going to read all 200 pages to finish yeah. it up. Yeah. Uh, I, I'll save it all for the review. I'm going to do the Tawny man as a trilogy review instead of doing each book individually mm -hmm. for the trilogy. And I'll save it for then. But all I can say is I uh, like, the amount of respect that I have for Robin Hobbs intimacy with her character writing is unrivaled by anything I've ever read in my life. And it, I feel like a broken drum, you know, cause I keep saying yeah. it, but like, I really think Robin Hobb is probably the best living fantasy author in the world. Like I really do. I You've mean, got me so intrigued by Robin Hobb. It, it's and I've heard her name forever. Like yeah. I've got, to, I've got to get to her at some point. There's so many deterrents about her. Uh, not, not her as a person or anything <laughs> like that, but like you see the mass market paperback covers. They're terrible. Uh, you, you see the word assassin in the thing. You're like, oh, he's going to be like an open yeah, assassin. assassin. Printers. Yeah. Never thought of that before. Oh, it's first person perspective. Ugh. And yeah. she overcomes all of those things that that made me very apprehensive to start and then just captured my soul i mean i've never had a writer since since george r martin who is my favorite um i've not had someone capture me in my uh my imagination and my feelings more uh than robin hop it's uh it's hard to really honest to god put in the words it really yeah is. well i need i believe you because like you're you're on point with everything you've said so and george was my boy you know, back in the day, yeah. he's behind my head up, up there. Up yeah, there. he is. Yeah, he's chilling, and uh, and like with your and with their friendship, like because they were always doing panels together. And what yeah. you said now, it's like it's all clicked in my head. So I've got to like I've got to get onto it, and I probably will, and it will be very bad for my mental health because I'm reading so much right now. Fitz <laughs> so is much. Fitz is a better version of Jon Snow. Wow, huge yeah. call. But to be honest. Jon Snow kind of fizzled out for me. Like he had a lot of uh, potential there. Um, I really like. I mean, him. book Jon Snow is different. Uh, yeah. I will say. Yeah, we're like, talking. About I, I have much more love for him. Yeah. But like in the show, like I hate talking about the show. Why am I doing this? But he, like they, <laughs> like he just literally turned into cardboard. Yeah. He just literally turned into like I don't want to. I yeah. Don't want to I mean, this. <laughs> a dance with dragons. Uh, Jon Snow, I thought was really excellent. I and that's yeah. Funny. Like a lot of people say, oh, you know, book four and five, I didn't love or whatever. I actually like, I love the dance. I had all those books. I love yeah. every single one in the series. There's so much fun. And every time I saw John, I was like oh, down. My boy. Yeah. My <laughs> boy's my back. Boy. Pandemic tubers, man. Always hating on the new gen. That is uh, the first time I've heard that. And it's really funny. <laughs> you should get that cliche going. Caleb asked, did you guys both start your channels in 2020? We did. Yes, we did indeed. And there's another 20, class of 2020 in the chat, man carrying thing, the legend himself, another class of 2020. And I was talking to him the other day and I remember like seeing his channel and I was like, he's already at 60 subs. What the hell? That took me forever. <laughs> like, like that's how quick things changed for him. Like it was like, we all pretty much started on like within months of each other. Yeah, we really, I think did. you were a bit earlier though, but you kind of took a break and then came back yeah so. yeah i i had a hard time trying to figure out what i wanted to do because mm. if i'm being honest uh i really started this channel the whole idea was to hunt for something to fill the void of a song of ice and fire for me mm. and i wanted to make more of a song of ice and fire content but my first video and my first two videos i think were game of uh, thrones uh, about the game of thrones books right um and I didn't love always just, oh, season eight sucks. You know what I mean? Like hearing that gets, over and over. It gets it, to be annoying. It was know? a bit demotivating. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And then I think whenever you start making videos uh, on YouTube or BookTube, we'll say, there's a lot of like, why am I doing this? <laughs> yeah there's and, a lot of that you know what i mean like it's like why why do i think i'm so special to share my opinion oh 100 i'm like why does anyone care what i have to say at all you know yes that, that's kind of what i struggled with but i said you know what i, I do enjoy talking uh i enjoy it more than writing reviews so i said mm -hmm. this is how i need to do it i don't have a ton of people in my life that read so i want to talk more and more and more and i said you know what there's probably also a lot of people that are doing what i'm doing and trying to find their next you know a song of ice and fire or for some people, the next wheel of time reads. So I think people yeah. can identify with the journey that I wanted to take. It took me a while to get my footing. And then once I did, uh, and I started posting regularly, I saw a lot of growth. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, you, it's it's actually crazy. Like if if you go back to your first video, even after a year, you're like, holy crap! Yeah, how much bad. things change, and it's so hard to just sit in front of a camera for the first time. You're like, I'm just such a dickhead. Yeah, <laughs> like, there is there is like a whole. You, know, you think you're so good making your little video, oh, you know? <laughs> There's a lot of that voice in your head. I had it all planned out, and I uh, I remember there was a point I, I stared directly in the camera, and I said, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have bought this camera. That's what I said. I, I said yeah, maybe I shouldn't have bought this camera, but I did it. And I that's will okay. say that's one thing about these 2021 book tour. Like I said with Noel, her first video is so much better <laughs> than most other people's first video. And I feel like they're only going to get better and better and better. You know, you're standing on the shoulders of giants. <laughs> I'm only kidding. On these gloriously broad shoulders yeah, these, here. <laughs> you know, I've, been, I've been hitting the weight room a little bit. Uh, Santi says Jimmy is now the Hob Chronicler. Uh, chronicler. I said that word terribly. Uh, I will <laughs> gladly if if Christian over here is Mr. Cosmere, <laughs> Mr. Cosmere, I am it's... down to be Mr. Six Duchies. Oh yeah, the dirty Whatever that means. The, the um, Six Duchies is like the realm of where Fitz is at, and there's Bucky uh, Castle. Uh, the The world's actually pretty amazing, especially because it gets expanded out throughout the different trilogies. Like at first, it kind of starts kind of like small and intimate and then really yeah. reaches out after that it's really cool that's one of my kind of we talked about it the other day like kind of criticisms of stormlight mm -hmm. i was like oh cool wave kings is the shattered planes and then like then we'll expand <laughs> but then it's like shattered planes yeah all the time <laughs> yeah and, and i kind of you told know. I told you and, and we talked about it and I, I, I actually am curious if anyone in chat and I'm kind of behind in chat right now. So I don't know if uh, I'll read it immediately, but <laughs> you know, is anyone else kind of feel like Roshar? Like we're just haven't explored enough with Roshar. And I know that it's a 10 book series, but we're four books in and I feel like there's so much I haven't seen. And I love the map. The map is beautiful. Yeah, oh, it's so in. Yeah. The names. What the hell did I'm a map They're crazy. Guy. I'm a yeah. map. I always <laughs> oh. am. <laughs> And uh, I'm a map guy too. Yeah, I, I, when I read John Gwynn's Faith on the Fall, I printed out the Banished Lands and like tracked where people were moving and stuff because of, that's like, a lot of actually traffic. the best way to read fantasy. I know it's so nerdy, but it enhances everything. Like, I actually need to print off the map of the heroes so I can track the battle. Yeah, because actually, I, yes, yeah. Uh, fun fact about Joe Abercrombie <laughs> are you ready to be crushed? Oh, crush me, dude. <laughs> he hates fantasy maps. <laughs> he didn't even yeah. have a map for the trilogy and he said why would i write a map that's stupid <laughs> you know what but he puts it in sharp ends because i watched philip's mm -hmm. uh video on it and he's like hey there's a map finally yeah he's he a map guy too <laughs> yeah he basically like joe abercrombie's like i guess i'll put a map in for these dorks like i these nerds over here just love this like he didn't want to do it at all and oh, actually i, I believe, believe the map i might be wrong about this so if someone knows you can fact check me but i'm pretty sure he took a fan's idea of what the map looked like and used it i dude i 100 percent believe that because joe that's so abercrombie you know it sounds right he's like yeah. nerds <laughs> 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 but like that's why you love him yeah yeah the yeah. map is cool but because we've started booktube you you get real picky like you pick mm -hmm. up a new fantasy like that's your map that's all you got hey you i know? if if an author has a map he immediately goes up one point uh on the arbitrary scale of rating 100 percent. and i'm gonna make a bold claim here still to this day a song of ice and fire has the best world map without a doubt. And, and not just westeros the whole thing with essos yeah. and um all of that dude the idea of valeria and yeah. then they all went west and the doom, whatever it was, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was the faceless men, uh, yeah. <laughs> they, they had this, um, you know, ridiculously apocalyptic event and the whole society just disappeared and everyone like moved west. Aegon the Conqueror, like honest to God, if yeah, there's anything it's... to say, even if you hate a song of ice and fire, you have to give it its credit for the geography that he crafted with. Oh, him. yeah. It's so impressive. It's so good. Like I've got this really high res file somewhere with the full map and it's incredible like if you zoom in and you can track danny's journey through essos it's it's freaking awesome yeah it's and it, i love it's great i love when um fantasy worlds have that big question mark area like you said with valeria yeah and i think stormlight has that with shinova like to an extent and it's very cool we got one scene there like no one actually really focuses on this but we have had a scene there in the way of kings um I think that's the big question mark area of uh, Stormlight, yeah. for sure. 
Yeah, and and I and I know that he is going to explore more. But as somebody who likes one, I like the journey. I love the journeys. Like that mm-hmm. trope is a super in for me. But it, it's just it, it's a little weird. I think that's one of the areas that I would say I've been a little bit let down with Stormlight. Mm-hmm. But even like you said, I think book five we're going to get a little bit of a different setting. Yeah, and but there's also such a thing as too much journey. Do you know what I mean? A- absolutely. And, and in my opinion, controversial. I agree. Controversial. Oh, I agree. I don't um, know. Wheel of Time. They move around too much, in my opinion. Like, I never get a sense of where I am because it's like, it's like they city hop all the time and they're always traveling, you know? So I, I'm going to counter that a little bit. Okay. Um, okay I feel up. like Robert Jordan's strength is his descriptions, whether or not you like them or not, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, like, I don't necessarily care for all the clothing aspects and whatnot that he does. I understand why that's important, cultures, all that stuff, but... Uh, I like the traveling and wheel of time in the first two books, because I feel like he gives a very distinct description for each destination. Like, I feel like I know what Camelin looks like. No, I said, uh, I agree with you. Like I, yeah, everything you said is right, but th- that's what I mean. Like, I want to be there a little bit longer. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I want to, and I feel like we'll come back and be like, oh, remember Camelin dude, 10 yeah, months ago, we we're back the- in the two rivers. Like, you know, I'm sure that will happen, but mm. like, I like to get a little more like settled, you know, like King's Landing, you know, I like, I know King's Landing and, and um, Winterfell, you know, like I know those places. They didn't I, like, I even though people thing. left, I've still got the perspective there. So it's like, still like, you know? Yeah. And one thing George did a really good job of with the map is everywhere feels very unique. Like when I think of the Riverlands, I think of the Tullys and, and the house oh, yeah. names being associated, all that oh, stuff. It's, it's so good. Yeah, there's very it's a distinct feeling. Uh, you know, my in-laws watched Game of Thrones actually after season eight and they mm-hmm. loved the show. Uh, mm-hmm. They did. They didn't uh, get as disenfranchised as a lot of people did after season eight. And, you know, they come down to this room and they're just like, OK, that's that's our son-in-law's nerd room. Right mm-hmm. now they come down, they see my pictures uh, in my maps and they're like, oh, yeah. like, you know, I'm like pulling out a map and unfolding <laughs> it and showing my father-in-law who had no interest before he watched. The oh, show. that's sick. And I'm like showing like, yeah, this is the next. So you see why it was so important for Rob to secure the marriage with yada. yada. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's yeah, just, like, I always so love cool. doing that to like newcomers. I'd be like, see, these are the fingers. And this is where little finger was born. That's why his name's little finger. Like, uh. yeah, me and <laughs> my wife cool. did a, one of those 3d puzzles for Westeros and it was oh, really rage inducing thing ever. But man, <laughs> I know the Westeros geography better than I do America's geography. <laughs> Dude, I'm with you. I I'm forgot you, Iowa was a state. <laughs> really? <laughs> I didn't even know Iowa was a state anymore. I thought, I thought it was gone. I <laughs> well, kidding. I can't speak cause I'm not like, I'm not well American. Not yet. Yeah. You're not everybody. Be well, you know, I'll be your roommate pretty soon. I'll be like your adopted son. <laughs> hey, you can, you can, there's plenty of room. There's plenty oh, of room. Yeah, dude. <laughs> TW Raven says, I just like to ta- take this time to thank both Jimmy and Christian for the awesome content. You guys not only inspire me to do better, but you also made this community warmer and better to be. And I appreciate that. Oh, um, thanks, dude. That's really nice. And if anyone's watching this right now, and the reason why I kind of like talking about stuff, especially with Christian, because I think we both take a pretty similar approach to the platform. Like if you're if you've ever had like the interest in making a booktube channel and you feel like it's too crowded or no one wants to hear what you say, I promise you that's not true. Um, there's so much room to grow in this community and we need more voices uh, and uh, of all kinds. So I think one of the most important things is to to try and to, to do the best where you're at. And if you're thinking about starting something, just do it. That's the hardest yeah. part. Just do it. I'm with you, man. Everyone who's like said to me, like, I'm thinking about it. I'm just like, do it. Yeah, because you won't you you it's that that's the hardest part. Once your first video is out, you kind of like it's weird how much your mentality changes because as soon as you get, get a few comments and a few views, you're like, oh, maybe I could do this and that like people will show up yeah. every time. I still yeah, I'll tell you what, you know, some videos don't do as well as others. Anytime like 100 people watch a video of mine, I'm still blown away. I'm just like, yeah. wow, they took the time to do that. And I've made I mean, me and you, I mean, we've become very good friends and Patrick yeah. has become a great friend. Rid is a good friend of mine. Like I've made like actual relationships uh, in the community and it's all because I decided to finally do it. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's weird how quickly, it it quickly it changed because I was watching your channel as like just a viewer. And then here we are the boys, you know, (laughs) the boys. And then, uh, you know, there's a ton of also uh, great commenters that you get. 
Um, oh yeah, I, there's like a whole commenting community. Like when I see yeah. certain people, I'm like, oh yeah, sweet. There. I here. saw Derry in the chat. Derry was phenomenal. My live ships, and then I saw Derry on an Andy Smith uh, Golden Full review today. I was like, oh look at that. Like, <laughs> you know, small small world over here in book two. Uh, Eric says, love Jimmy. He's nuts. Well, thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> Leanne's here. All right. Check it out. And I'm always so terrified to say her name wrong. Uh, if she knows this, uh, the hero's <laughs> best moment, the cheese trap. Have you gotten to the cheese trap? Oh, yet? I haven't Christine? read the cheese trap yet. I won't say a word. Bloody, we'll... So Abercrombie, doesn't it? Oh the cheese God. trap. Well, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll wait till you're done and then we'll talk about it. Um, well, where I'm up to, Gorst is getting very exciting. Uh, excited. He just screamed like, let's Get charge in his face. little voice. <laughs> Crush my jaw with your heel. <laughs> <laughs> I need to actually hear how they do him in the audiobook. Like, how high pitched is his voice? Oh my! You know God, what I mean. I haven't thought about that because I'm getting like a real squeaker vibe when I when I read. Oh it. yeah, yeah. It's very much like the Mike Tyson effect, right? Like he'll tear I, your head oh, off. Oh okay, yeah. That's a good actually uh, comparison. I never you, thought of it that you'll way. You'll probably giggle at him while he's tearing your head off. Right? Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Andrew says, I'm not a heroes yet, but reading best serve cold right now. Holy shit. It is incredible. I did a discussion on best serve cold with uh, Leanne and Jake Bishop and Bookborn and Christian has a review for best. Uh, serve yeah. Cold. Oh, Ooh, I loved it. Loved it. It's my favorite first and my favorite book this year that I've read. Yeah. Loved that book. Andrew Plies agrees and loves red country. Thank God. Thank God. Red uh, country. I'm very curious to get there because you're gonna very like mixed it. responses there. Hey. You're going to like it. Yeah, <laughs> like I I'm feel sure like all my expectations for what you would enjoy have been spot on thus far with First Law books. And oh I, yeah, 100%. I think that you'll have uh, there. There'll probably be some flaws with Red Country, but I think overall you're going to be really hyped. Yeah, like yeah. I just love Abercrombie so much. He kind of can't do much wrong for me at this yeah. point. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely one of those authors. Like it's probably a null chance that he's ever going to release something I'm going to hate. Um, yeah, but, yeah. Speaking, it's of, like. Oh yeah! Did you see the cover? I, yeah, the US one. Oh yeah! yeah. Oh, it Dude, looks good. It looks, it looks real good. <laughs> so sick, and I can't the, even and tell like, you why because there's a spoiler on the front cover. <laughs> oh really? Okay. Well, I didn't because I don't know what's going on. I well, think it, it's spoilers. not like it's like a context spoiler, so I'm not gonna tell you, but you'll mm. see it and you'll go, "Oh, that's what that is." It's not like a, right. the whole series is ruined type thing, but okay, it, it has a uh, a purpose. Uh, for what's on the cover and, and it, I thought that was a really nice touch. I need to look at that now. Mm. Cuz I don't and like the uh UK ones I don't know what they are. It's just like a flag. I'm like okay. I don't really look at, I haven't like studied it, you know. Yeah, yeah. I uh I I think the UK covers largely have been better than the United States covers or American cut whatever you want to call them uh until this new trilogy. This new trilogy I, I mean, agree I do, with you. I like the UK ones, but the American ones are They so did the thick. they they flipped it where like UK is usually a bit more simplistic or minimal and uh U US is usually more involved and detailed and they flipped it for the new trilogy. Yeah. Like you guys have got this uh minimalistic covers and they work really yeah, well. Sometimes minimalistic works like the Hob UK coverage are the ones I went with and all the yeah. Hob ones they're very very uh you know, plain Jane, but they kind of have a classy vibe to them. And they're I like beautiful that. though, because of the calligraphy script and stuff. Yes. And the font's very nice. It's very, very good. It's actually the same font that RJ Barker uses on one of his, uh, or, uh, one of their, uh, uh, ship books. I can't remember uh, the bone ships, I believe. Right. I can't remember. Um, has Jimmy read great coats? I have not, but it is on my TBR. I don't know when I would get to that. Um, but, We'll see. Maybe 2022. Maybe. Uh, Andrew Plyce says, anytime someone reads an Abercrombie book for the first time, it makes me want to reread. <laughs> yeah, there's something magical. It's like one of those authors where you just like, this is special, dude. Cherish every moment because it's yeah. a one-of-a-kind experience. Yeah, and you can't, you know, you... <laughs> You, you can't uh, read it again for the first time. And it, it, it hurts. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's like, that's why I'm kind of glad I hadn't read much before I started my channel because uh, it's so fun to watch someone read something for the first time and enjoy it. Yeah. Like that's, yeah. that's like a huge thing that reaction channels and stuff like that. People want to see, people want to relive it through other people because that's the only way you can do it. Yeah. Because reading it again, if I read, Wii, if I read Way of Kings again today, <laughs> it'd be so vastly different from the first time i picked it up like so i could never recapture like being like what the hell's a sky eel well it's also like the time you read it you know I yeah mean, all that timing's everything yeah man carrying thing <laughs> hey 
it's the boys. <laughs> Indeed it is. And it's the man. And what is he carrying? That has been my question since day That one. is the number one uh, mystery in Stormlight. Yeah. Stormlight <laughs> books of the universe itself. Because man carrying thing is Cosmere canon. If anyone didn't know, Brandon confirmed oh, that. Brian yeah. Sanders confirmed it. Why do you think he started making <laughs> Brian Sanders? What did he call Joe Abercrombie? Joe Anaconda? Yeah. <laughs> that was my favorite. That <laughs> was like a pro wrestling name. <laughs> That's terrific. Yeah. Uh, your man carrying thing is Mr. 5K now. Uh, and I'm not talking about the runs. I'm talking about subscriptions. He's hit 5,000. He's going to have a live stream tomorrow. So make sure if you're not subscribed yeah, to man yeah, carrying yeah. thing, I don't know what you're doing. Dude, uh, you've got to. He's going to destroy booktube like he's yeah. gonna be the king you want to talk about different lanes <laughs> and people cutting out their own etch i'm talking like the man carrying thing is by far one of the most it, you know he is he's the most unique channel and oh, yeah. i watch every one of his videos i did not watch your wolves of kala review because i'm about to read it and again i don't usually watch reviews before i read stuff but i'm excited mm -hmm. to watch it afterwards mm -hmm. if you have not subscribed to man carrying thing do it and make sure to attend his live stream tomorrow his his new video even got not the review, the one before that, the one that blew up about Sanderson writing faster than you can read. Yes, it like got like actually like weird like kind of David Lynch vibes like as it <laughs> went into the green screen and it was like the universe. I was like, this is actually great filmmaking. Like this is actually sending a chill down my spine in a weird way. Yeah, it was so good. Yeah, he's he, got something. Yeah, he's legitimately got a talent, and I think. That oh yeah, there's like an actual aesthetic, to, like uh, aesthetic, aesthetic. Either way, yeah, to his work, and it's like really, he's talented, very, very talented. Can keep yeah. me super intrigued for however long the video goes for, and I, I love it. Yeah, like his video just about letters versus numbers, just two minute debate, which is better. Yeah, great. <laughs> That's what we need <laughs> on BookTube. I agree. And, and, you know, there, there's a lot of people with a lot of different ideas. Don't be afraid to try it. Don't be afraid to try it. Says the guy who only does book reviews. And <laughs> I think booktube is in desperate need of variety. Not like not talking down to anyone because there is a lot of variety, but I still think there's like so much more. Mm -hmm. And I think the more variety we get, the bigger the this niche will grow. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I totally agree with you. I, uh, I think that there's a lot of the realm unexplored kind of like roshar <laughs> yeah. you know, raven says oh, dude, that's beautiful that was transition. good right that was, good. <laughs> that was great you're talking to the best here you know we're we do it <laughs> professionally here at the fantasy network roshar is criminally underexplored and the history is even more criminally under under explained sadness i am curious do we think that we will get a cimmerillion or like a fire and blood type book for the cosmere later down the well, line well he talked about like he asked the other day, like um, about an art book for for Stormlight, and he said, should they do like an encyclopedia book? Um, so it's definitely something he's thinking about. I think it'll happen way later down down the road, you know, because a lot of what makes Stormlight is the mystery of the history. I yeah. think that's actually so. If you just outline it in a textbook, it, um, kind of loses lot of the magic yeah and his creativity and imagination is like that's what makes brando sando you know yeah and he's great at like the historical twist yes you know he, he does it in mistborn does it in storm like oh it's kind of one of his like do you want to say tropes i don't know but it's like oh it's not actually how you thought it went down like he plays with that a lot so i feel like the copper mind um website is kind of the cimmerillion of yeah, this series and maybe it's not needed anymore right yeah like, now, to be fair, I really like like Fire and Blood in, in some ways is a little annoying because it wasn't Wins a Winner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah that's but so there true. is something really cool about busting open like the or the Cimmerillion and, and then like diving in, right? But you can do that largely um on the internet now. And yeah. really when you look at the World of Ice and Fire book, the the coffee table book, it is kind of like a wiki in a way. Yeah, it basically it's like the high class wiki. You yeah. Know? You yeah. pour yourself a a coffee, you slam it down on the table, the dust, and you're just like, what happened at Valeria? <laughs> yeah, and then that and then that's it, right? Yeah. And he never tells us. Did you get uh, has anyone I'm sure somebody's heard this, but we all know that Duncan Egg and the whole story with them ends at Summer Hall. The tragedy of Summer Hall. Mm, yeah. Did yeah. you know when George published World of Ice and Fire? 
because he wants to keep it a secret because he wants to reveal it through Duncan Egg, like as yeah. he writes those short stories. This is amazing. He <laughs> wanted to take a legitimate ink like blotch and pop it on the text page. That's as, beautiful. As, and as, he as, did do that, right? Well, it's like it, it's bit? not. Yeah, it, he did, but it's not as mm. uh, on purpose as he, <laughs> he. He literally wanted to make it look like the maester had just knocked over a bottle of. Oh. Ink. And the he sent it, and the publisher was like, "We can't do this, George. Like, do you understand how many refunds we'll get?" No, that's amazing. That's I so know. good. I was like, "What? You know, this is uh, man carrying thing has a video that says capitalism kills reading, and I'm like, this is actually an example where yeah. capitalism did screw over an amazing <laughs> artistic touch of a book. That would have been so good. That would have been so good. I mean, how cool would have that? That would have been the best. I mean." And it's, but like the wiki, like that book, it has artwork, it has like ink marks. It would have worked. I actually, I, I, think I don't think it would have been a problem. I think you he would have had some, some dummies who returned it, you know, but mm. we don't want them anyway. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm sure they want every single purchase and they want those dollars to stay in the register. Of course they do. Yeah. Uh, Jody. Hi, Jody. How you doing? Says, love both of your channels. Just finished Heroes. Fantastic. I enjoyed Christian's channel being Australian. There is not enough Aussie booktubers. Also join enjoyed robin hob love fits i mean someone said it above fits is incomparable there's there's literally nobody i've heard a lot about fits i he's per, hmm, we'll see i guess is, see, it, I gotta, is I gotta, it like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna test you a little bit okay. i'm not i have no opinion because i don't okay. know right yeah but this is my question because we talk about it sometimes with wheel of time is fits really good because you follow him from being a child through many many books growing up or is it the writing? It, like, does that alone carry it, well, or is it the writing? Well, it's the well, it's, it, it's both. But the writing is the outstanding part, right? Um, there are series with characters that live all the way to the end that have more words, mm -hmm. uh, all this type of stuff. But Robin Hobb, the intimacy she puts you in with the character is unheard of, and also the development of Fitz as a kid, and then going into adulthood, and then now he, uh, where I'm at, he's kind of middle aged. The progress, but also the not progress that mm. happens, oh. is very impressive. And the trauma that he suffers is like the, he he's he's kind of on a you know assassin's apprentice. He's kind of on a hero's journey in some ways, mm -hmm. without any of the recognition. And all of the baggage, trauma, and consequences. Nobody writes tension and consequences better than Robin Hobb. And you experience that through a first person perspective. And does and, it shift later on in the series? It still fits, but it's third person. So so the way it works is any of the trilogies with fits, which is Farseer, Tawny Man, Fits and the Fool, right? And that's the first trilogy, the second trilogy, and the final trilogy. Yeah. Uh, there's two other trilogies that break up those three, right? So after the first right. and after the third, and that is Live Ships and the Rain Wild Chronicles. Those are written from a third person perspective in a different part of the world that has right, intersecting. Okay. It, it's kind of like uh, Abercrombie with the standalones, actually, like how, you know, be, uh, Best Served Cold kind of took place in a little in a different continent or part of the continent or whatever. It's It's kind of the same idea. It's like jumping around. Right. So Robin Hobb, <laughs> she she's able to intertwine these stories and make this big, you know, realm of the elderlings. But she jumps from first person perspective with Fitz, introduces a massive cast in live ships in a totally different place, totally different story. And you have to kind of piece together what's what, which is really cool. But she oh, goes to the third person perspective and knocks it out of the park. I mean, live ships is about as perfect as you get. Like I, I don't know if there's any criticisms to live ships. I mean, you could <sighs> maybe choice wise, but it, I gotta set you these expectations with you though. Yeah, you gotta go in with the expectations. I would say along the lines of like a Song of Ice and Fire, mm -hmm. not so much like heart beating action that kind of thing. You're That's gonna cool. get an intimate story that has some of the, my favorite political intrigue uh, that that I've read, but just the relationships. I mean, get this. Fitz's books are written from a first person perspective, but has two of, if not three of the best side characters I've ever read, read ever. Like, and it's just through his eyes the whole way. That's what I'm saying. She was able to, craft, oh, she was able to craft such deep side characters. That's the skill. A, dude. 
Adapted. That's really it's tough. It's actually funny because the magic in the book is called the skill. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so you just you made a what? great. You see, you're already part of the. This fandom. is what this is what I get paid for, uh, <laughs> right here. <laughs> and just everything that Robin Hobb uh, and oh, God damn, this is turning into a realm of the elderlings. Uh, why, dude? You should I'm be, all, I'm just sitting back and enjoying this. You keep well, going, you know, man. and maybe someone's on the fence in the chat. I hope this kind of pushes you over the edge. But everything yeah. from the perspective to the magic to the terrain to the POV uh, to the POVs in the other novels are all picked for a reason nothing is is for waste everything ties together so well and she's able to flex um different muscles in the first person perspective because of the magic system that she chose like it was just all very well thought out that, that i love that it is yeah and is it is it completed it is done when did that when did that come like wrap up uh 2017 i think right okay i think and uh she's actually admitted uh, since then, she says it's been very hard to write anything else. Said so I she's bet. Struggling. Yeah, yeah. Like, what do you do after you finish that, something so big? Like, once Sanderson finishes the Cosmere, like, what the hell is he going to do? I yeah. just guess adapt it. Yeah, it, it, it really makes you wonder. Uh, it, you know, like honestly, imagining George has written other things, but I imagine like how could he write anything else right now? Yeah, yeah. I think he's got a very complicated relationship. Hey, with he, this series, he, I think it's a um, like. Like a therapist would have a field field day. Now him. here here's a question, and I said I was going to get back to this like an hour ago. Oh yeah, okay. I have I have a question for you. Mm. So I think that the Cosmere is something totally different, and we're seeing these Fortnite crossovers. We're seeing all this stuff. It's going to get adapted so, in some way, some shape. It's going to yeah. be adapted. It's going to be a hit. I feel pretty confident with that. Yeah. My question to you is this: Do you feel? At some point, the Cosmere will be opened to other authors. No. <laughs> Never. Never. Not no, even I... after Brandon's gone. That's a different question. It depends what happens. I feel like there could be some bullshit after he dies, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dep like if it's massive and he dies, well, then yeah. But this is what's special about Brandon is that he writes so much and he's like so reliable. Like, I don't think the additional author thing will become a question. Yep. Um, and as chill and as nice as Brandon is, I don't think he would let go. Like, this is his baby. Well, you know? I was so for me to be clear, what, what I'm what I'm proposing is right. after he finishes his arc with Cosmere. Right. And right. OK. I'm thinking of Steven Erickson. Uh, with Malazan, Malazan, mm. however you want to say it, uh, you know he's not. Esselmont writes books in that universe. Now I know that they came up with the get. That's different. I know it's different, but I also think, and there's a lot of comparisons to the mm -hmm. MCU. Yeah, there is huge comparisons to that. I and still don't think it's going to happen, dude. I think it's just Sando all the way. So you don't you think once he finishes the Cosmere books, that's a wrap? Yeah, like they'll like let's say it gets massive. They'll want to they'll want to franchise it. Um, even after he goes and they want to do prequels and stuff, but there'll be source material for the prequels. Like there will be enough to completely flesh it out for like decades. I, I really don't think there needs to be more writers. I, I feel like, I mean, I agree. I, and, and honestly, what you're saying is right. Yeah. But let's just have some fun. Let's have some fun. <laughs> yeah, let's have some fun. Why not? Come on. I'm being too serious. I'm dragging yeah. it down on it. Jeez okay. a whiz, guys. Oh, Jeez a whiz. You bring him back in one podcast. Yeah, you bring him back. He's running the show. What is this? <laughs> he hits 10K, selling out already. Something cool. changes when you hit 10K. You're very lucky to have me on. Just, yeah. just saying this. <laughs> yeah, you get a whole new bank account. It's crazy. Oh, dude. The checks just roll in. They just keep coming like 50 cents at a time, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm covering my Audible subscription over here. Uh, <laughs> Dude, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, so if, let's just say if a major company were to buy the Cosmere rights, Brandon's yeah. still writing the books. Hmm. Brandon says, okay, I'm finished. I did what I wanted. And they go, oh, are you? <laughs> you you're finished, you're huh? You're done? Yeah. Well, that's Let okay. me introduce you to this room. We're just going to strap you down. And there's a, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a certain franchise I'm thinking of when I'm talking about this. And it rhymes with Star Wars. Yeah, I was going to say, okay. Uh, you yeah. know, everybody would have said, you know, there's a lot of people back in the 70s say, man, George did it. George Lucas <laughs> did it. He crafted this. Oh, he came out the prequel. Okay, those were pretty bad, you know, <laughs> but, uh, uh the, you look, know, 
nobody other than George will ever make these. <laughs> <laughs> I like what you're doing. Like, I like where you're trying to take this, but I still have to be so annoying and be like, no, because I feel like Sanderson knows all of this. Like he's seen it all. He sees everything. Right. And he's like, I'm going to do everything to combat all these issues that everyone else had. Yeah. And he's just, he's just gunning for like the perfect scenario. And I truly think he'll get so big because of it, like ridiculously big. And we'll be like the guys who were there at the beginning. And uh, yeah, it's definitely going to happen. I already started to worry. Like I had the gatekeeping instinct kick into me yesterday with Fortnite because I saw all these random seeing Mistborn and be like, what's this? And I'm just like, uh, like it, it's too quick. Like too many people found out overnight. You know, <laughs> I started to get real like panicked. I'm like, ah, oh, it's no, like not through Fortnite. Like this is not the way to like, you know, I mean, I think I, it will get so big. Everyone has a moment where they feel like they're going to gatekeep. Uh, it's yeah. a bad thing. We don't want to do it, but everyone had, does have that little notion. Oh, dude. Um, Major. It, it's just part of being a fan. I think like, uh, yeah. Uh, Fair warning. If you slam, I'm telling you now, folks, <laughs> you're a booktuber and you slam the song in Ice of Fire because of the show. And when House of the Dragon comes out, you're making like theory. You, you're doing any kind of, oh, this is so sick. I'm going to roast you. <laughs> He's going to show up, dude. You I'm won't gonna, expect it. I'm going to roast them. It's going to happen. I, you're going to be I, like Ishri. In first law, just slither down the wall. Hello. <laughs> oh, you like House of the Dragon, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's weird. Look at these tweets. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I won't because I'm not a bad person. Uh, but I'll it's mentally. tricky though. It's it very tricky. tricky because like I looked up obviously I looked up like Mistborn Fortnite just to see what people on YouTube are doing. And it's like these Fortnite YouTubers are like 10 billion subs. And they're just like, oh, I think it's from like some book that a guy wrote. Uh, it's a cool skin. Like I might buy the books. I'm just like, ah, oh, I hate this. I love, you know? I loved looking at the announcement from the official Fortnite Twitter. And people are like, <sighs> we know what it is. Like just Google it. It's easy. Yeah. But yeah. they were like, I think it's low key. And then yeah. I were like, I think it's aliens. Cause if you take this, it looks like the sun. And I'm just like, yeah, it's Kelsier. Oh, dude. And you know what's going to happen when we're old bastards? There'll be some other new collab and yes. we won't get it. Five. And we'll be like, oh, is that like a reference to Kaladin? And everyone's like, dude, pff, Kaladin. Kaladin. <laughs> he, ended, he, ended, he ended up, uh, I don't know, being a Sky Eel or something. Yeah. <laughs> the new Sky Eel skin in Fortnite. <laughs> Brandon just fumbles the bag and Kaladin like becomes a furry or something <laughs> I, but that's what's going to happen because if if it gets massive we're going to get so much trash that comes with it you know yeah i actually kind of just... like what aaron said here she said anything in the cosmere by anyone other than brandon would just feel like fan fiction to me i think it certainly would yeah I think a lot of people felt that way about star wars yeah well it kind of no one's accepting it as canon nobody is the disney yeah. stuff yeah but it's there you know, it and is a whole there. generation grows up with it. I, I I think that is kind of what my fear is, is like what happens if this does blow up? Right. And then, yeah. you know, Brandon's done because Brandon has a plan, which is why he's so amazing uh, right. and why everything just makes a whole lot of sense with his writing. But I always like wonder, like after the fact, it's like if he's done, let's just say for fun, let's just say it's Disney. And Disney's mm. like, uh, this has been a you know billion dollar franchise. This is this has been as big as Harry Potter. We're yeah. not. You know, I mean, look at the Harry Potter series. A cursed yeah. child, terrible. Awful. Yeah, I think it's almost inevitable that you get some kind of stuff like that. At a certain level of success, you're gonna get these dodgy side projects. You know. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a shame. And I, I'm like, I would put basically all my money on guaranteeing he will get that big. I like, I don't really have many doubts about it. No, I don't either. And I think it, it, it's it's strange because there's like eras in fantasy and then there's like almost like sub eras, right? Mm -hmm. Like where things are a, a, almost a commentary or a subversion of that. So like you have the Tolkien era, right? And mm -hmm. C.S. Lewis, you have that. George is clearly a subversion yeah. of those things, but still feels familiar enough for people. Yeah. Brandon is he's his own thing. And yeah. he has changed fantasy uh, completely. People are yeah. writing like Brandon Sanderson now, uh, whereas they were writing like Tolkien 20 years ago. And it's just really interesting to think that, 
you know, we, we weren't around, well, at least I wasn't around when Tolkien was writing. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was able to see what happened with those adaptations and it changed my life forever. And there's a generation right now that are one getting to read Brandon Sanderson, but there's people who are going to see Brandon's adaptations and it's going to change a whole generation's view on the fantasy genre. Like, yeah. This is big. Yeah. He's going to be the new standard like a hundred percent. Um, and it's, it's exciting, but it's also a bit sad because like we're in this perfect state right now mm -hmm. where everyone's supportive, everyone's down for it. We're just seeing the climb. Um, but when he's on top, you know, and it's like the, the, the Cosmere side of Disney world opens up or something, Could you it just won't hit the same, you know? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I will say this. Um, I don't love hard magic systems. Brand yeah. Brandon does a great job. I enjoy his. To be clear, I think he. Right. I mean, he's the best to do it. I've seen it done in other books. Not as big of a fan. I, I only have experience with hard magic through Sanderson. So mm -hmm. um, before that, I didn't really like know how that could be done. To me, it just feels like almost like a video game, and but like it not not in a like super over the top way. But it like tickles my video game side. Like we need this many resources to do this attack, and if they can't do that, then they're in trouble. Like it's it works in that sense, you know. Yeah, I mean, for me, I I do like that stuff, but to it can get a little much at times. Um, yeah, and I know there's some people like uh, someone just put uh, Azure Paul said he uh, that that they hate soft magic systems. Sorry, Lord mm -hmm. of the Rings. I love low fantasy. Uh, I love fantasy how it is portrayed in the Song of Ice and Fire. I like when it has consequences. And that's one of the things I do like about the hard magic systems is that there's like, a, you know, I don't want nonsensical things like we're out of nowhere. This person's never done any magic. But, yeah. you know, I don't like that. Uh, I, I want there to be a little bit of rhyme and reason. But like the breakdown of like, I have this much mana. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like now it can Sanderson be well. tiptoes into that territory. He's gotten better, though. I, I yeah. think he does a great job. Like I said, Alamancy's amazing. Uh, yeah, I really, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I think Alamancy is begging for a game. Like it's so perfect for a video game. Yeah, it just makes so much sense. Stormlight, not so much, hmm. but yeah, um, I think, I think it will become soft in an adaptation. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. Because they can't go into it. There's no time. This is probably actually, you know what? I actually really like this comment. I want to see what you think about it since I have you here on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, Bashendel says, I almost feel like the Cosmere is too deep, meaning there are threads going all over the place and it takes a special brand of nerd to <laughs> want to pull on all of those. Strings. Hello. Yes. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> so uh, I, I have feelings about this, but I, I kind of want to hear your take. I, uh, I just compare it to the MCU where mm -hmm. it's like, um, there are a billion threads and so many untouched in the cinematic universe. You just, they'll just kind of pick and choose which ones they want to put on screen. You know, mm -hmm. we might not get white sand, but you know, we'll get the gist. Um, but it's, it is, I think uh, the deeper, the better when it comes to novels, you know, I don't think you need to limit yourself. Well, yeah. So th this remains to be seen in stormlight. Right. But I like the fact that so far, and I know there are other tie-ins in the Cosmere. I know them, but you could read Stormlight Archive without knowing the other books that tie in and still have mm. a great experience. Yeah. My problem would be, and I think this might be where Bashendel is kind of coming from, mm. is if I get the book eight and I've only read, because like some Brandon Sanderson's a hit for me and some of it's a miss, you know, and I'm not going to force myself to read books that I don't like. So Mm -hmm. I would be very disappointed if, let's say, Book 8 of Stormlight Archive is a huge tie into this other book that he had, uh, and I couldn't get all of the impact, not even the impact, but like all the context within what happened in this narrative without going mm -hmm. and then reading another book. Um, now, I'm not saying that that's a popular opinion, but that's, I, I, that's what I'm kind of getting at here. Uh, or what maybe what I'm feeling from like Michandel. And I think that it's cool if you reward the people who want to do that, but you still need to have a narrative that's tight enough by itself to kind of carry the story on. And I yeah. think Brandon Sanderson is hundred percent going to do that. I don't, I don't expect Brandon Sanderson to screw over people who are just huge stormlight fans that didn't want to read Elantris. Yeah. I feel like he's walking, like that's a very fine line. He's got to figure out. Mm -hmm. He got way more comfortable with it in rhythm of war, but in the grand scheme of things, 
you could read Rhythm of War and have read nothing and still be pretty fine. Maybe the Navani scenes would get a bit old um, <laughs> quicker. <laughs> but uh, I think, but I think, because of the nature of the Cosmere, he'd be doing it an injustice if Book Ten of Stormlight is not a huge Cosmere battle. You know so, what I mean? So you you feel like it should be way more intertwined as it goes on. Uh, by the end, yeah. Okay. By the end, I think see, by Book mm-hmm. Ten, I need to see Mistborn characters in Stormlight. Yeah, I think that would be fine as long as it's explained without having to go read Mistborn. Yeah, like, I think, no, now, agreed, agreed. It I has think, to stand alone. And it should still have Easter eggs and such that reward that, the readers. Because I'll be honest, I read Warbreaker, and I felt very rewarded for that when I read mm. Oathbringer. And it I loved it. Balance. Oh, I loved it. And it was it was a perfect balance. That, that, and that's why I'm not too worried about it. Because if I had not read Warbreaker, I would have been fine. And I hadn't read Warbreaker when I read Oathbringer, and I See? was fine. Yeah. And, and the thing is, like, Z- Zahel is still a cool character without knowing his Vasha. Yeah. You know. And, and honestly, we still don't know a lot about even with Warbreaker. We still yeah, don't know. Even then. So it, it's enough. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think. Like, uh, Chris Bookish Cauldron. Yeah, I, I love me some Chris Bookish Cauldron. I uh, was listening back to. Uh, me, Chris, and Jake Bishop just did a live Ship Traders trilogy spoiler discussion two nights ago, and I was listening to it today, and I was like, I could listen to Chris talk all day long. Even if I don't agree with it, I just love hearing Chris's opinion on Chris stuff. That's what he's talking about. He's one of those booktubers that like I'm low-key intimidated by because he has a lot of knowledge yeah, that I possess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you Chris, know? yeah, Chris is like, I, I told him this uh, Wednesday night, I was like, if if there's ever anyone that disagrees with me, like I like if I love a book, if yeah. there's anyone I want to hate it, it's Chris because I feel like he does such a good job of tearing apart things. Uh, yeah. you know, like, and I'm not saying that he's always critical or anything like that, but when he doesn't like something, I always feel like he's pretty justified. And yeah, like it, he, it's it's a special skill to like win over people that because I know he doesn't like Mistborn. I'm pretty sure, like you, <laughs> but I can go. hear him talk about it and not yeah. get like angry because yeah. yeah, it's it's just like an informed person's opinion. So it's it's works. Yeah. Know? Chris has always been, uh, since I've started watching his channel, has always been super um, like consistent with his opinions. Yeah. And I've gotten so many good recommendations. I mean, Chris Bookish Cauldron is the reason why I read Robin Hobb. I mean, there's other people and whatnot, but really Chris is the one that pushed me uh, super far into it. And I can't thank him enough because now it's like probably my favorite series of all time. So, far. And you're going to be the one who pushes me to read it, by the way, like eventually, whenever mm-hmm. it happens. I mean, we're evangelical with our uh, our fantasy love, I think. I it's just sad because I've never made anyone read anything. Everyone's making me read stuff. Yeah, it'll come. No influence, man. No, I think you're. In, you're. You've, <laughs> I know actually, Bishando. I remember seeing a comment on your video. He's. I think believe he started reading One Piece because of you. Oh really? Or ordered well, it at least. Oh, that's cool. That's awesome. Well, like the main thing I get happy about is when a few people said they read First Law because of that video, and that just. Oh, that that's just feels good. That's that the best good. feeling as a booktuber. That's the best, <laughs> man. It's really yeah. awesome. Yeah. And just Joe, I feel like Joe just needs to be. He, I, I feel like he'll forever stay kind of under the radar. Like he'll be big in our world, but I'm not so certain the adaptations will come for him. You know? Yeah, I don't know if I want him to. Like, I, I, I want to see everything I love adapted. Don't get me wrong, but like yeah. some of the books with like more internal dialogue and like that, like when you're in the character's head. I, yeah. I, sometimes you lose a lot of the luster, and I think First Law could be good but i could also see it missing the tone yeah it's such a rate like a novel experience Galata, you know? yeah sometimes things are better left as books yeah i mean yeah but also you could imagine it at the same time being so iconic dude um, yeah for sure i just feel like people would um really see it as a game of thrones ripoff which would trigger the shit out of me but you know yeah I, always, seen, I they're not all that alike that the more I get into it, the less alike they are, actually. Yeah, it's, um, it's like one of the first series, like, you know, obviously, like I said, I started my channel to find a song of ice and fire, you know, the next one for me. And everyone's like, read Wheel of Time and read First Law. And I read both and I'm I didn't finish Wheel of Time yet, but I'm just like, nope, <laughs> these do yeah. not relate. I mean, I can see yeah. why if you like one, you could like the other. Yeah, I have uh, a hard time telling people what to read after Game of Thrones because it still for me stands on its own. You yeah, know, it depends nothing on is what quite you liked. It. Yes. Yeah, yeah. What aspect of of it did you like? Because if you been... like the banter and the blood, then Abercrombie. 
yeah if you like the world building i guess wheel of time but wheel of time's not really your and i jam so you know i can't speak for that yeah i mean i think that yeah for different reasons like the dagger and the coin is absolutely in that recommendations pile for me Mm -hmm. uh realm of the elderlings i think catches the intimate spirit of it the most like that's probably the most similar and it's because of the way hop writes uh, they yeah. are very different authors, but they do a lot of things similar and they explore a lot of the same themes, which I really like. Mm-hmm. So it's just one of those things. I'm actually going to make a video eventually kind of like, all right, I've been on book two for over a year now. This is what I have found for you people who love a song of ice and fire that are looking for something else. And you have to break it down into why did you like a song? Of ice yeah. and fire? Uh, which is hard to honest, honest to God, this is pretty hard to pinpoint because the song of ice fire does a lot of things. It, and that's why it's so successful because yeah. it did so many things well. And uh, I think sometimes you just got to let go and be like, it was great for what it was. And yeah. uh, other things do other things better, you know? And that's just like, it's the goat of what it did basically. Yeah. yeah. So. And it's one of those unique series where like the plot is super awesome and yeah. the characters are some of the best in the genre. Oh like, man. It's you know just, I mean? it's just like yeah. lightning in a bottle. Like, you know, yeah, it really that. is. It's one of a kind. And like, if, anyone tried to do exactly that again, it wouldn't hit the same. So that's why yeah. it's good that we have all these new takes on fantasy now. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, it's also good because I, I, George obviously inspired like a whole generation of writers and uh, some good, some bad. Yeah. I'm curious to see where, where like the Brandon Sanderson, right? I would love to see someone take like the Brandon and Sanderson. Oh God. Brandon Brian Sanders. Sanders, the Brian Sanders uh, the Anaconda. motivation and mm. maybe somebody with a little bit uh stronger pros uh and mm. that's subjective but like you know a, like a patrick yeah, yeah. Lufos type writer yeah, yeah, yeah. or a robin hobb type writer who then implements a lot of the things that we love about sanderson which is you know the magic systems and the plots and, and yeah yada, yada. i feel like that could certainly be achieved like i feel like we could get a superior yeah sanderson experience pros wise but i feel like the work ethic is going to be like untouched for years to come yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, he's like the first author I've seen that treats it almost like a professional athlete. He seriously does. And with like the percentage bars and everything on his website, like that's like crazy. Yeah, I have a beef with percentage bars. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, let's let's go into it. So the reason why is so uh, I'm a developer and I, I, I program oh, yeah. for a living. And yeah. I've seen so many portfolio sites because that's like a good way. I was self-taught. So a lot of the ways that you end up getting jobs is making a portfolio site to show off your skills. And right. so many people are like, I'm 85% proficient in JavaScript. And it's because like making a meter is like kind of like a cool visual for a website. Yeah. But I'm like, what does that even mean? Like, yeah. like I know 99% HTML. And I'm like, do you really? <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know what I mean? What is this progress? There's no official. Yeah. But at least with Sanderson, it's like what he knows will be the end. Yeah. I mean, he could say I'm planning on writing 700 pages. On my yeah. Partner. It's a way more applicable and accurate yeah. Uh, and worthwhile i get it, what you're saying though yeah it it's just kind of obnoxious <laughs> oh dude it's so ridiculous yeah uh and i still you know to this day uh, you know people uh will post their portfolios on a reddit on the uh self-taught dev subreddit and stuff and it's just like take those progress bars off there what are you <laughs> doing i and i actually the more i update people on how i'm doing on something the less likely i am to to follow through yeah, that's actually uh, pretty natural because you get an endorphin release when you talk about doing something. Yeah, yeah. I And that's what I, I mentioned that in my George video. Like when yeah. he kept updating people at wins, he probably felt really good um, and then didn't write that day. Yeah, and then he looked and at that's Twitter. that's how it is, dude. He looked at Twitter and was like, I don't feel so good anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I feel really bad for him in the end. Like, I actually do feel sorry for him. Yeah, he's a human being, believe it or not. Yeah, uh, I know. Yeah, I know. Uh, you forget it sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and you know art art is art's painful man uh like i know you've written before I've, yeah. I've i've written stuff i've never really done much with it or anything but writing in any form of art it, it is a uh it is a difficult process yeah i think writing especially mm-hmm. because you're pouring you have to like let go of a lot of your insecurities and stuff yeah. to write. Cause like imagine being Joe Abercrombie, right? Like writing this sex scene and knowing one day your kid will read this, <laughs> you know, you got to oh let go. Of it. <laughs> You've got to let go. Yeah. Have you seen any of the forewords that Joe Abercrombie's written yeah. on his books, like to his daughter? I just like the little things, like one day you'll read this and be slightly disturbed. Yeah. Yeah. He had <laughs> one. It was like, 
it's like something to his daughter and she said you're probably asking why all the stabbing <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's so uh, good that's just his turn though hey but yeah it's stuff like that because people will be like oh jimmy wrote that i guess he like you know you know he must have had an experience similar to that like you're just open yeah. for so much criticism yeah, like, I mean, you're really covering true. a lot of really uh deep and emotional stuff i mean robin yeah. hobb covers a uh uh one of the most traumatic experiences a human being can uh, ever have happened to them in live mm. ships. And some people don't like it. So, um, I, I think most people do. It's like a 90, 10, 80, 20 kind of thing. Uh, mm. And, and there's probably a percentage of people are just turned off because of it, no matter how well you articulate that. Some event. things people just don't want to read about. Yeah. I mean, I put the book down for like, like I was like, oh, I'm settling in. We're going to read the rest of this book. And like, I read it. Mm -hmm. I think it was like 30 pages and I just put it down. I was like, I got to take like a break. I got to take a day break, you know? And I, I like that though in books, it. even though it's, even though it's heavy. I like that. Yeah. You know? I mean, I do too. Uh, yeah. There are days where I can't handle it as much. Um, <laughs> like I said today, I was like, I can't finish, uh, you know, uh, fool's fate because I will be just destroyed for this live stream. But it's just one of those things where, I imagine what Robin Hobb had to go through mentally to write that scene in live ship. And I'm not going to mention it because of spoilers, but mm -hmm. it's just, uh, I couldn't imagine. I really yeah. Especially imagine. because like people get so attached to their characters, like to do, to have them go through traumatic events, it would be terrible to write and terrible for us to read. That was one of my one criticisms with the game of Thrones show. I'm not going to like, I'm not going to spoil it, but like they changed a rape scene from a side character to a main character, I felt for shock value. And I, I agree. Re it really rubbed me the wrong way. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And they, wrong. and they just didn't know what they were doing with that entire storyline. I, mean, I just felt like that was very like in bat in poor taste. Yeah. And I don't necessarily, there, there have been authors of, uh, you know, they've written those type of scenes and I don't necessarily think that they intended to offend. Uh, hmm. but man, if you're going to dance that line, you got to be precise. You got to be. Yeah. You got to be real careful yeah. in how you write that stuff. You got to know what you're doing. So like, I, I like it, but I feel like with this whole era of like shock value, because of a uh, song of ice and fire, mm -hmm. you get a lot of bad takes, you know? Oh yeah. Absolutely. So Andy Smith says live ship is brilliant. I agree. Andy, I, you know, it, live ship is not my favorite trilogy of all time, but it's probably the best trilogy I've ever read. I think wow. from a writing standpoint. I What's your favorite trilogy? Is it Lord of the Rings? No, no. Uh, favorite trilogy. Um, I'll tell you what, man. Tawny Man. Uh, once oh, I finish really? this book tomorrow, might be it. But recency bias or no? Dude, Hobbs just on a different <laughs> level, dude. I'm telling you, I I, I won't I keep going. So, on. I feel so inadequate here. I've got to read Hob. I, I think my favorite trilogy of all time, as just a trilogy. Mm -hmm. Memory Sorrow of Thorn, probably by Tad Williams. I think. Oh, really? Yeah. I've Knowing of... how important that piece of literature is in the mm -hmm. fantasy genre and how criminally underread and underrated it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was doing things. I mean, he was the roadmap to to Germ from Tolkien. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You've told me that a lot. That he was like one of the big influences. Yeah, Patrick Ruffus says that Tad Williams inspired him, and, and Tad's writing is gorgeous. Mm. Uh, I mean, just chef's kiss all day so i think as a trilogy and being a like acknowledging itself that it's a trilogy and has a middle book you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. the reason why i don't want to say farseer or live ships or anything is because like it's also definitely enhanced by its predecessors and the ones that come after it right yeah so i get that I, and i haven't read further on in the osternard saga uh because he's written like i think one or two standalones he has another standalone coming and then there's a there's a sequel trilogy to memory star on thorn now Oh, okay. Uh, the third book is pushed back to 2023, maybe. I can't remember. But just like Memory Star and Thorn as a trilogy and what it meant for the genre and the enjoyment why I had while I was reading it, I have to give it the nod, I think. Mm -hmm. Have you you've read Lord of the Rings, right? Though? Yeah. Yeah. I read it when I was a kid. I'm actually, uh, I've been in a process of reread. I read it very slowly, uh, especially oh, on Christmas right. time for some that. reason. But I oh, need yeah. to finish Return of the King. Uh, and I and I love Lord of the Rings and I like it more and more each time I read it. And as I get more well read, I feel like I pick up on a lot of the things that I didn't uh, quite appreciate mm -hmm. when I was younger. Another thing about Lord of the Rings is when you watch, you know, we talk about your channel and I talk about how much you get me fired up for the Cosmere and all the tie ins and whatnot. 
um, these people, uh, uh, history of the ages, men of the West, um, uh, in deep geek, these Lord of the Rings channels that are on here covering some really on content are changing the appreciation I have for Tolkien because I've only read parts of the summer early on. I've never actually read it front to back and it's yeah. a pretty dense book. When someone takes like a section of that and dives deep and then puts all the connections into what is in Lord of the Rings, like Gimli mm-hmm. getting his gift from the elf is actually a massive deal. Uh, that yeah. Of the look of hair, under- right? Yeah. It's a huge deal. And you don't know that if you only read Lord of the Rings. So it's yeah. just amazing to think that back in the day, World War One era, like Tolkien started this project that has just as much complex intertwinings as a lot of our favorite series now. Like, yeah, it's, it's amazing it's so that impressive. still today that people are diving into it. Like that's so impressive. And people yeah. are there for it, dude. Yeah. I mean, I would love to see what I would just, I wish I could have been like an adult for the time before the movies. 100%. Like I'd love to see what the Discord was like about um, the discourse. Sorry, was like <laughs> the Discord uh, was like about Lord of the Rings before the movies, because I yeah. feel like it'd be a very special time to be in the fandom. You know, I mean, could you imagine that being your favorite? You know, your your Golden <laughs> Light archive, and then getting it. I mean, you're gonna feel that. So get ready. Uh, so it, it, I if think the it's, budget's correct, I, I'm either gonna cry of happiness or cry of sadness. You know what I mean? A little bit of a nervousness now, especially because of how. Dude, like, if they wheel canceled. of time and like Kaladin's in like a tuxedo, I'm done. You know. <laughs> 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 oh my god, dude! What what do you think about the Moraine thing? Was that just a bad leak? Uh, or is I she think legit I, wearing a, a a blazer. I think it was a very bad leak. I think it was a very bad leak. <sighs> Uh, oh, Andy man. Smith is, uh, I, I think he's Passionate. upset. <laughs> I can't tell if he's pumped or upset at me because I put my whole side of the rings. Flames, flames on the side of my face. Also, definitely a quartet. Two Green Angel Towers, definitely two books. Yeah, it's uh, Two Green Angel Towers is the longest fantasy book ever published. It's how, yeah, how big is it? 500,000, 600,000. Oh it my took, God. It took me a month to read it. And I read, I read a lot. Yeah. Um, ooh, curious. Where's the best place to start reading Robin Hoppe's books? A hundred percent Assassin's Apprentice. That's the Farseer. And then follow mm-hmm. the publication order from that. And also, Brian, I saw you asking questions about Wheel of Time and uh, Brandon Sanders and stuff. I wasn't able to. I don't know those orders off the top of my head, so I let the people in chat answer. So if you answered uh, Brian's question earlier, I really appreciate that. Uh, we always have a good, strong chat here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're chatting with nuts. Yeah, I see people saying start with Farseer and everything and rebecca says from norway uh, rebecca says i'm gonna go sleep now it's 3 a.m here it's been so much fun listening to you fine men can't wait for the next live stream i appreciate that very awesome much. thank you yes thank you i'm trying to get caught up here yeah in deep geek has some amazing lord of the ring content yeah christian if you haven't checked it out like even as a person who makes videos i think mm-hmm. you would, i think you would really like some of this oh yeah videos. i'd love i love watching lore channels like lots of inspiration yeah i'm so like <laughs> like I'm not that in touch with Lord of the Rings. Like I love the trilogy, like everyone. And you watch the movies all the time. Never yeah. read it. Um, never delved much deeper than just like the movies. Like, and I, I delve deep into the filmmaking side, but not really the lore of Middle Earth. The lore is so much more impressive than I realized. That's that's the best thing I could say. Yeah, and it, I think that's what I need to get to. It's made my reread a lot more enjoyable like a lot mm. more enjoyable uh yeah. D- dairy uh is says as an oldie only the diehard uh tolkien fans knew what was coming mm-hmm. yeah and, right yeah dairy also because i said man could you imagine having a because royal assassin book two in the far Seer trilogy leaves on a massive cliffhanger and i was like man could you imagine like waiting for book three and dairy was like i did and I'm like oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh, oh shit. wow uh, Andy has a question for you. He says, Christian, what are oh. your thoughts on Emperor Soul? It's my favorite Cosmere. I want to interject real fast. Andy, that is also my favorite Brandon Sanderson book. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm going to look like an idiot because I haven't read it yet. <laughs> Mr. Cosmere has not read it. I thought about um, spitting out my water for the meme, but I didn't. No. <laughs> I've got like I've I've got Arcanum Unbounded right there. It's like it's very short, right? like 60 pages or like 100 pages, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's very short. Uh, I I love it. I really really like it. Is it set on like a a world we know? It's set on the world of Atlantis. Or Atlantis oh, okay, Atlantis, however you say it. And I think also it's haven't read that. <laughs> I haven't read a Atlantis either because <laughs> mainly because I know a lot of people who love Brandon and don't like that book. Yeah. Um. 
same issue with me here. Yeah. yeah, so I've kind of avoided it. I think I will read it though, especially if it has any ties to Emperor Soul, because I thought Emperor Soul was like really enchanting. Like I thought it was the most charming thing that I've read of Brandon's, and I've read Mistborn One, um, and Warbreaker, and everything in Stormlight so far, including mm-hmm. the novellas. And I really thought that it was excellent. And I also really like Dawn Shard. Dawn Shard was fantastic. Hey, it hey, was so fun. You want a hot take? Oh yeah. Give it Don to Shard was the best Stormlight book. That <laughs> you know what? There's not much I can say to refute that. So um, it was it was a smooth experience, and it so balanced fun. like the lighthearted fun vibes with like deep lore, which is kind of hard to do because it got real lore heavy at the end, right? Like really lore heavy. Yeah. Um, like so, like the Cosmere nerd in me is like. There's so much there with Risen. Um, but as for Emperor's Soul, like I- I'll chuck it on my TBR. Like I could read it in a day, I'm guessing. Yeah, and, I uh, dude, I think you would love it. I, I could see you uh, putting up a review. The best novella I've ever read. I, yeah. I could see it. I could just see it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like what Warm Emperor said here. He said, I always think of Lord of the Rings as one book, probably because I read them all in one edition when I was a teenager. I actually did the same thing. I had like the omnibus, like mass market with like Frodo and the ring on the front when I was a kid. <laughs> uh, Cause my dad bought it for me right after fellowship of the ring. And I, I didn't realize it was a trilogy until I grew up. And I think in, in theory, I believe Tolkien did write it as six books. I think really, I think technically, okay. or he wanted to publish as one. They said, get out of here. We're not publishing. Yeah. It. <laughs> and then he broke it up into six books, I believe. Oh, I see. And Sarah. Hi, Sarah. How's it going? Sarah's a, uh, a good friend of mine from the U.S. Song of Ice Fire community. She says the Lord of the Rings side of TikTok is where it's at. I do oh my not God, have really? TikTok. Neither. Because I would never get any reading done. if I I've did. heard about book talk. That's a thing. I like what Andy's saying. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, you bastard. A real hot take edge dancer <laughs> is the best stormlight because it's the shortest. Um, you know what? For how much I detest lift, I actually thought edge dancer was fine. I thought it was a pretty good time. I am um, one of the I am in the minority of people that enjoys lift for what she is. Because yeah, we, here's my thing about lift. All right, let me have a moment here. Okay. Go. Lift. Come on. Everyone, if you don't know, lift, for lift is like a character in Stormlight. Stormlight's very serious. We have depressed characters. We have characters with PTSD, trauma mental disorders and then there's lift who's a person who likes pancakes for days <laughs> like andy said <laughs> and her magic is fueled by pancakes and um lift has <laughs> not by pancakes by food she eats food to get power and she clearly has a traumatic uh childhood backstory which she has tried to um like push down in the recesses of her mind and has a Peter Pan syndrome of like, I don't want to grow up. So I'm a just meme everything, basically, and being annoying little immature person. And uh, these people exist. And I feel like it's good to have, like annoying people exist, right? It's good to have like a, a little thing like that. But there's clearly so much more depth to her, which I feel like will be explored so much and even in the fourth book now she was toned down you know she mm-hmm. still had her lighthearted side but she like you know she's coming of age a little bit and i feel yeah. like having this immature kind of annoying uh start it's, it's it's a little jarring i guess with the tone of stormlight i feel like it's going to be interesting to see the growth i think you have patience for her because you're a teacher <laughs> yeah maybe I think, maybe i think that's you, probably a big part your professional life has uh allowed you uh to to ignore the shortcomings of the worst character in fiction <laughs> I, i'm only kidding I, no but I, having but what you said i think is true because i've dealt with like a lot of you know children like children can be annoying out. They're like there's out. no there's no doubt about it kids are mostly annoying um yeah. and but i've seen like i've taught kids who were super annoying um when they were younger, but as they got older, like five years later, they're legends, you know. So I and have now to... they're beating you in Fortnite dressed as Kalsir. <laughs> <laughs> Those bastards. I, I really like this. Is I, I like the potential of development for Lyft, but not really a fan of her chapter perspectives of yet, at least. And I always put that caveat is that Brandon is obviously going to develop Lyft into a character. There's a time jump in the series. I, I mean, I think Lyft's going to be after book five. I think Lyft's going to be like one of the if not the main character because based yeah, on things be one he of them. has said yeah 
So, in fact, if I could put money down, like you said, one character for sure makes out of book five alive and makes it to the second part of the series, I would put all of my Dogecoin on <laughs> Lyft. Yeah, 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 me too. Yeah, I lift, Lyft's going all the way to the end, in my opinion. Um, mm. it, it, now, the only thing that makes me a little scared is now that I've seen Fitz grow up, like it's going to take a lot to impress me with a development of it. Of I don't think it'll match what um, Hob is doing. There's no way. Said. There's, uh, also, there's no way. I just think know. that might be what he's going for, you know, like yeah, a, it, he could do it. He could. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. 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 I, I don't want to so. be that guy where I'm like, oh, it's not as good as fits. Cause there's nothing as good as fits, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah. You kind of like, not everything's a comparison thing, you know, it's just yeah, like, it, especially cause you have to fit your narrative choice. Uh, what the story is actually about. Like the realm of the elderlings is very much about fits. I mean, you're really yeah. following uh, this very unfortunate boy. My God, <laughs> he gets beat up so bad. <laughs> All right, I'm trying to keep up here. Uh, uh, Elantris is fine, but reading it after Stormlight makes its falls more apparent. We need more lore from Cell, though, because the Emperor's Soul was great, and it teaches much more cool stuff about that shard world. Yeah, I haven't read Elantris, but I thought Emperor's Soul, from all aspects, writing, character, story, and especially the, ma the magic we got in the little time we had with it, was awesome like it totally mm. sold me on it it made me yeah. want to read elantris to be the honest. concept of the magic in elantris is it's the biggest pull for me because yeah. it's like um isn't it like they feel pain like any sensation they have they just feel it forever yes. yeah so, i believe that's correct so that's cool like that's a cool concept in on its own i've i get like the writing's going to be a bit janky mm -hmm. um but just as mr cosmere as you've coined the term i'll be interested that'll be a lot there for me you know Yes, yes. We have Mr. Cosmere and, and the, the dirty duchy over here. Uh, Noel is also a teacher and loves Lyft. So my theory is not oh, totally I, confirmed. Uh, hmm. I think I think we're onto something there. And yeah. I think uh, there's a huge crossover of teachers in BookTube, actually. There's a lot. It's so that. hard always being right. Um, yeah. <laughs> Philip, Philip is a teacher. Yeah. Yeah. And Andy, Andy says, Smith's just trolling at this point. Like, what is the next Cosmere Fortnite character? <laughs> well, why don't you tell him, Christian? Break the news. Well, it's, it's Vin. Okay. It's Vin. And I'm very excited. And I will spend money on it. And I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how much is the Kelsier skin? I got to know. Well, as a. Like I played a bit of Fortnite, right? So I had some V-Bucks saved <laughs> up. <laughs> is that like Doge I, or no? It's just like the stupid currency okay. of. Uh, of Fortnite and uh like it's placed in that tier because you buy the currency you buy the v bucks it's placed in that tier where it's like just more than the smallest purchase so you buy way more than you need Classic. um but yeah but luckily i had enough to buy the smallest amount and just add it up and be cool um but you would have to spend like maybe like 15 usd to get enough if you had nothing to then buy Kelsia, I, I only spent like around seven dollars USD to, to get Dude, him. That's more than the book. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> it's it's bullshit, but <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> now, my, my question is, is you know, we need to judge the success of this crossover. Did you see a lot of Kelsiers running around? No, dude. You like no. It was just a bunch of dudes dabbing as like Thor. <laughs> just flossing know. while they're killing you. <laughs> Fortnite is it's just the, the it's so trash like the community and like everyone playing it. it's just kids it's just kids but like if I'm going to play Fortnite I'm gonna be Kelsia so like it's kind of a requirement that's oh Mr. my Chris god <laughs> oh that's amazing also Valet and Balk uh what a name I love seeing your name come up in chat I'm oh this guy's here. a legend yeah he showed up through my first law videos yeah. yeah i've seen him in your comments before christian do you think you can catch up on first law by september for wisdom of crowns i just want to say i read uh six books in two weeks to get caught up last year for the trouble with oh, peace so i will certainly be catching up hell yeah and uh booktuber moment here i have been talking to golanx the publishers of first law Ooh. and uh they said they asked me like if i was keen to review the trilogy so yeah dude i'm catching up Mr. 10K himself. I also reached out and uh, didn't yeah. hear jack shit. <laughs> <laughs> nah, dude, come on. You know, when that you was... have, I have a fourth of the subs that Christian does, so they don't treat me the same. No, you know what? It was all through it was all through our boy, Petrick, because Petrick's the guy with all the connections in the world. Yeah, and Petrick he, he runs the publishing industry. 
Patrick is like the more you know. There's a, there's a lot more to Patrick than meets the eye. I'll this tell you dude, that. This dude's in. He's in with with the big dogs. He's very mysterious, kind of like I, Valent and Balk. Yeah, yes, aren't they? Because like that's oh, like uh, it's gonna be first law spoilers. But what yeah, they're but... doing with that in the in the series is brilliant. Like it's so yeah. Fantastic. That actually, uh, so Brian here said so many awesome authors being discussed. It's going to be really difficult to decide who to read first. And I was kind of thinking mm -hmm. about like who you would be recommending. And I think this is a, a good time to kind of talk to you about this. But, mm -hmm. you know, you are Mr. Cosmere. I think everybody <laughs> here knows all 37, 38 people know this. Uh, you uh -huh. love the Cosmere. Yeah. But I think you have a new favorite author. Am I right? Yeah. Joe Anaconda. He's bloody amazing. <laughs> Yeah, like our boy Abercrombie. Things. Yeah, <laughs> it's a be it's 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 an amazing experience. Like this, if I had to pick, like if I had to pick a page to read of him or Sanderson, I would pick Joe every time. Like wow. I en I enjoy his books just as much, but for completely different reasons. I feel like um, Abercrombie is more typically what I'm into pre mm -hmm. like pre Cosmere pre anything. Like if you knew me prior to reading sanderson you wouldn't necessarily recommend him to me i'd probably think it's a bit nerdy or a bit lame <laughs> but for some reason the way the cosmic came across just worked for me i was very excited yeah. by it i think but, um one of the things that separates those two authors mm -hmm. um is the fact that joe abercrombie has a very distinct tone yeah yeah sanderson doesn't really yeah. Um, it's he's he kind of does, yeah. he does, but it's not as juicy as Abercrombie's. I feel like his devices are are his trademarks rather than yeah. his writing. Yeah, it's interesting. Like I'm not usually one to like delve into this kind of stuff. I'm just like I like the book. <laughs> yeah, it's <was> cool. <laughs> but I'm learning to appreciate that stuff more. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just I just click so much with Abercrombie's writing, like the nihilistic vibes, like the dark humor how everything kind of fucks up all the time. Like, I like that in my stories. Do you think that's because you, you used to be in a metal band? <laughs> Is that because you like devil music? <laughs> <laughs> I was so excited to find out that you were in a metal band. Oh, dude, you have no idea. Long hair, guitar, like doing windmills on stage. Is there any videos of this? or uh, They could be that I'm not <laughs> inclined to uh, send on stream. But okay, well, you, could you and I now. can... Walk down memory lane together later, dude. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I used to, I used to really get down with metal. I used to love uh, oh, Shadows seriously. Fall, Kill Switch Engage, and then I got into some White Chapel, like really, really. Oh, dude. Metal. Okay, yeah, nice. I saw. White yeah, Chapel we covered. Line, um, I think. Oh, did you, dude? How did you? Did you? Did you make it out okay? I mean, you're fine in a mosh. They pit. got banned from the <laughs> um, altar bar in Pittsburgh because they were throwing like pig's blood on the audience holy shit okay like, i've never gotten that uh <laughs> like it's never been to a concert like that it was pretty like heavy. i mean yeah seriously yeah, like dude. that actually happened no pig's yeah blood? No, oh, I'm dead serious. yeah <laughs> oh my god yeah they were pretty heavy uh, but I also like things like Dragon Force and like, but more like technical stuff. Dragon Force is like the Cosmere of metal. Yeah, I was gonna. So this is perfect. This is like <laughs> I literally wrote down four bullet points, and I wanted to ask you. And I'm gonna use this very specific example. I don't love this band. Like they have songs I really like, but like they have so many songs that are misses for me that I don't consider mm -hmm. them like a favorite band of mine. But mm -hmm. Avenged Sevenfold right. has uh, the song "Hail to the King." Sad but true ripoff. That's fine. <laughs> it, it has a tone and oh wait lyrics. no it's not that one sorry just want to clarify okay hell, another hell, one hell, of that song was a sad hell's just the one's like hell, hell yeah you know yeah, it, yeah, and yeah. It, it talks about like bending the knee and it kind of talks about like a king like ruling mm. with an iron fist and, and it makes me want to like write for some reason like I oh yeah you talked about this how you wanted like the king picking up his weapon again so, yeah like he get comes back for one last hurrah right after he's mm. tried the politicking he's just going to go back to the black thorn if you know what i mean yeah and <laughs> i i kind of wondered if you could give me any recommendations for metal that lends itself to like the fantasy genre dude i have i have such a perfect recommendation for you let's hear it there is a band pre tv show and i was listening to them without realizing they were singing about a song of ice and fire i had no idea for Excuse like the longest me? time like they got us 
Like they got a song called like Take the Black and it's all like about going to the wall. I didn't even realize. Let's go. Yeah. They called the sword. They just called the sword. And they're like they it's like a they're like southern. They're like some like sort of southern metal. Uh Oh, I'll send it to you later. Oh but my like, god, that's so they've got strange. multiple songs about a song of ice and fire. Because I've listened to uh like Scar did uh Reigns of Castamir. Yeah, okay, yeah. And and you know, he did the Game of Thrones theme as metal. And I'm just like, man, I wish there was like more fantasy. You know, a lot of it like goes into horror and so- kind yeah. of satanic things or whatever, demon, whatever. Yeah. Witchcraft. I was like, man, I'd love if someone just leaned into epic fantasy over here. There is a lot of crossover actually with fantasy and metal. Yeah. Metal fans tend to be really into fantasy. Actually. I would love if you could curate a list. I will do it. I'll send you this band who sings about like taking the black and the riverlands and shit. I had no idea. I mean, this is all pre me picking up the books or the show. <laughs> let's just be honest, Christian. Listen, I got some pipes on me. I'm not going to lie to you. I got some pipes. All right. Oh, dude. Are we collabing? We might have to Dude, start I'll do the backup screams we might have to start a book <laughs> tube metal band dude i want to do like a breakdown with like some kaladin like you know how he always drops a line before he bursts the light we'll like say that line go into a breakdown what would we call ourselves if, if we made a metal band like you really you want to go to like the bard side of things immediately because we're like fantasy boys but you know let's reinvent the wheel a bit what about the 18th oh. shard <laughs> the 18th shard the 666th shard. <laughs> oh, I like it. <laughs> yeah. um, maybe the wheel weaves. <laughs> Taviran. No. Taviran. Me, you, and Patrick. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Pe- I, I don't know. We could put Patrick on, like, I don't know if he can play an instrument. Maybe, like, the flute or something. I don't know. <laughs> flute break. Yeah. yeah. Flute breakdown. <laughs> Dude, I love it. I have such a passion for metal, but I've never been able to talk about it here because, well, like, there's no <laughs> doing it. Yeah, yeah, dude. You know, Led Zepp- a lot of Led Zeppelin's um, songs were about Middle Earth. No. Um, yeah, dude. They talk about Gollum in like one of their songs. Yeah, if you go back. No. Yeah, dude. How dare you? You're lying yeah. to me. You're no, lying. No, dude. Like a good chunk of their songs are about Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah, dude. Seriously, I'm not bullshitting. Dude, you're blowing my mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's so much crossover. Oh my gosh. People are actually really, by the way, people are like really into the metal conversation. I kind of got zoomed out there, but uh, I saw Metallica at their Justice for Altar. That's. Oh my God, dude. I'm so jealous of you. Avatar is my newfound metal band that rules. I'll have to check them out. Okay. Uh, There are so many people just like throwing out the band, uh, the brand of Sacrifice to Berserk themed metal. Do you, Uh, um, do you see, uh, do you listen to Trivium? I have listened to Trivium, and I I remember you saying on your live stream that their new stuff is super good. Oh, dude, it's like ridiculous. But like, they have an album called Shogun, which is very like oh in like Japanese mythology and stuff, and like it's like a concept album to do with like all these myths and stuff. So you'd probably be down with that. I'm definitely gonna check it out. Yeah, uh, Chris Bookish Culture says there's a metal song about fits called Hand of Sorrow by oh, dude, Within. That Tim sounds Christian. sick. I'm s- there's a song of fits. Yeah, <laughs> people are freaking out. Like what? That is sick. Look at this blind. I've never even heard of this band. Blind guardian has songs about wheel of time and Lord of the Rings. Oh, sick. Uh, yeah. People- there's so much crossover, dude. Maybe we need to do a collab video on like metal and fantasy. I think we actually should. Dude, Cause there's a- people would really like that. Yeah. Yeah. There are so many bands that sing about, it's just it's just the copyright issue, hey. But we could we could figure something out. I mean, we don't even have to play it. We could just talk about it, right? Uh, yeah. Can you play like eight seconds of a song without getting uh, you know demonetized or something? I don't know. There's all these weird loopholes. I think if you're actually talking about the contents of the song, you're kind of fine actually uh, with fair use. Like you can't just okay. I can't just drop Trivium in the background of my law video. <laughs> but like, yeah, if Dude, I'm talking you could, about the... what if you played Trivium? Well, then I yeah, then I could. Dude. Yeah, dude. Sarah says she's in. She says she's on the tambourine. <laughs> dude, yeah, like like Robert Plant in in uh, <laughs> Led Zepp. He he killed the tambourine. He loved it. Dude, there's so much stuff. Summoning is an atmosphere of black metal band, which is almost completely <laughs> open inspired. Dude, this is awesome. 
I'm yeah. so glad that I that I brought this up. This is like because I never write down points for conversations, yeah. usually, especially with you. But there was like mm -hmm. a couple of things that I really wanted to go over tonight yeah. that I didn't want to forget <laughs> about. And this is one of them. I'm really, really, really glad that I did this. Yeah. Oh God, there is um there is a oh yeah, they're called Winter Sun. There's this band called Winter Sun, and they uh it sounds like if all the fantasy boys got together and dropped an album. Like they've got bloody like harps in the intro and stuff with like the choir singing oh it's like dragon God. force but not as lame you know i mean this <laughs> this is amazing dude not as lame yeah you're right <laughs> <laughs> you gotta listen to the album infest uh, the rat's nest by the band king gizzard and the lizard wizard that's a ridiculous name uh, <laughs> crazy name i know but the album is literally a sci-fi fantasy epic each song is like a chapter i oh, i've cool. always wanted to have something like that Mm. Uh, Sean Huber says Falls of Raris. I probably said that wrong. Now, Alex, what is this about? Yggdrasil by the Brothers of Meta, if you like John Gwen. Is this literally a song about like John Gwen's book? Because aren't. Um, oh, I'll lose my mind. Isn't Amon Amath? They're like the Viking band. Like they actually dress up. Yeah. Do you know those guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There, we had a couple people in high school with Amon Amath used to make fun of them. <laughs> i don't know why they're a good band but like it, uh andrew and chat would know we always just like made fun of people listening to certain bands like as i lay dying we we're like yeah that was garbage it was fine we were just yeah. gatekeeping, <laughs> gatekeeping. It, it's not heavy enough it's not white chat oh yeah i was like i had a phase where i was like everything was too heavy like if it had screaming i was like not gonna do that because i like listen to iron maiden and metallica but Dude, no, times yeah. have changed. I Iron Maiden does a lot of fantasy stuff. Yes, I was gonna actually. I was gonna. That was gonna be my example. I was gonna say when I listen to Iron Maiden, sometimes I can really paint a picture of a fantasy book in my head, and I really like listening to it. Yeah. Uh, specifically, I don't know why, but it always reminds me of Memory Star and Thorn. Now that I've read that, like when I hear "Run to the Hills" and stuff, it's just like the existential threat that's facing oh, the, the yeah. um, continent and all this stuff. I don't know. It runs through my head, and I can start imagining things. This is a great. Oh, dude. Your name should be this. the Lost <laughs> Metal Band. Oh, yes. People would into it. shit on us in the metal community for it. Uh, yeah, Battle of Evermore. That's the song I was talking about. There's or so one many, of the songs. This is so rough, guys, Zeppelin. because I'll tell you what. It, I will give uh, a huge high five and a massive shout out on my next live stream to anyone who goes through this chat, curates this <laughs> list, and then puts it in the comments. I'll pin it. Yeah. Because I'm, oh, I'm dude, not going to. Sure. <laughs> but um, there's a lot. Beth Shindell says Trivium is so soon good that he said <laughs> so. <not> soon. <laughs> They're incredible. They're really amazing. Malibu? And I think they just announced uh, their new album is going to be like Greek mythology inspired concept album. And I'm so down for that. Oh, I'm like getting really, really pumped up for this because yeah. uh, like lately, you know, I don't listen to a lot of music much anymore unless if I'm working out, but like. Uh, my friend hit me up. I was like, you ever listen to metal anymore? I'm like, not really. And then like hearing you were in a metal band and then him saying that I've been kind of like delving back in. And I know, yeah. like I said, I'm not a huge Avenged Sevenfold fan, but Halo of the King, I love that song. It's a it's a banger. You know, you can throw it on. It's, it's yeah, a good if time. I was going to, you know, if I was making my last stand, you know, that, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. what I want in the background, you know. I love their song Nightmare. That's a good song too, but it's less, less fantasy inspired. But I like, like that cool song, song, but I feel like it got a little bit cringe after a while. Oh yeah, I like the, the, opening the bridge. Stick. Yeah, yeah, the like the drum fills in the opening is oh. like badass, dude. Wait, what? Christopher Lee has a metal out al metal album based on Charlemagne. <laughs> what? Who he is actually a direct descendant of, dude. What? Sir Christopher Lee is the most absurd person in the world. He's if that's true, he's gone up in my book. You've heard the story more. about him in the death scene in Lord of the Rings, right? No, all I know is that he wanted to be Gandalf. That's all I know. Oh, that's amazing! I didn't know that. So Christopher yeah. Lee was on set and they were doing the stab scene from behind. Yeah. And Peter Jackson's like, no, 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 do like, do we want you to do it like this? And Christopher Lee's like, no, that's not what a man sounds like when he's stabbed. He sounds like this. And then they're just like, oh, hell look yeah. at him. And Peter Jackson's like, well, why, why does it sound like that? He's like, oh, well, I've seen it happen. <laughs> oh shit. I've dude. seen a man die from stabbing. That is that's as legit as it gets, man. Dude, I think that's just incredible. Kaladin Brood is a Utah-based black metal band that is named after a character in Malazan, and almost all of their songs are about Malazan. That's sick. I can't that wait. Is so cool. I can't wait to jump into that universe at the end of this year. It's going to be so awesome. You should totally make a music fantasy vids. I mean, Jimmy does kind of look like Anthony Fatano. I don't know who that is. 
I hope that wasn't an insult. <laughs> no, that's like, <laughs> sorry, that's so funny. That's such an absurd uh, like comparison. Anthony Fantano is like the main music reviewer on YouTube. Oh, really? But he's, but he's like Maybe basically we'll collab, bald bro. and like got a buzz cut. I guess it's because your hair's like slicks back. Listen, my, I'm not losing my hair. I've just always had these widow's peaks. Okay. <laughs> I promise. Uh... I like I, I kind of get what he's saying, but like if you had like maybe round glasses, maybe I'm better looking at least. I think. Oh, there's no question about that. Obviously, look at that. Iron Man had a song about Paul from Dune. Really? Oh, cool. See that? I didn't know either. Wow. Every Coheed and Cambry album except one is based on a huge. I have heard that that they were telling a story throughout their albums. That's yeah. I love a good concept album. Metal concept albums are really good. Ah, there we go. Ale Alexander. So no, not specifically John Gwynn, but about a giant tree, Asgard, etc. Mm. Yes, the spirit of Gwynn. Yeah, for There's sure. There's a lot of like Asgard songs, you know. <laughs> yeah. A lot of like oh, Norse mythology. Wolves in the throne room. Man, if someone curates this list, I'd be really excited. Christian, I think we need to make a fantasy metal video. What do you think? <laughs> oh, I'm down. I'm so I, down. Like, I actually think like it would, one, I think it would do well. But two, I think a lot of people, like they don't realize they want it. Until you get yeah, it, until you, yeah, exactly. you know what I'm saying. You know, like I've thought about making like, um, like how people do like the Kaladin soundtrack. You know, like I thought like maybe we could do like a first law like theme, like oh, metal. You know, dude. that could be that could be sick. Yeah. What if we um, what if we called our our metal band that we're making for sure? Uh, <laughs> what if we called ourselves the Open Council? Oh, dude, that is sick. Dude, I'm so into that. Sick. Let's do the it. Open Council is fucking, that's it. I mean, Valent and Balk would be great, but it's someone's user's name now in the comments. Yeah, no, I no, no. Like the Open have... Council, dude, is yeah. so good. Dude, the Open Council. And just... We need some We need some bias presence, though, in our band. That's Patrick. Oh, yeah. It's, it's Patrick. perfect. It's Holy perfect. shit. It works so well. Dude, how good is this scene in First Law when Baez <laughs> is coming to town? And he uh, stops at the clothing store. <laughs> Dude, it is like the best scene in the first book, in my opinion. I love it. Uh, it's so Baez is just I freaking love this guy. Like he's terrifying. He's actually so scary. But yeah. he's such a funny lad. Oh, I at first I thought he was like old endearing mentor. Nope. He's a no. bastard. He's uh, he's terrifying. I like Nightwish. Do you like Nightwish? Um, I haven't listened much to Nightwish, but they're like that fantasy vibe with the mm -hmm. keyboards and stuff. As soon yep. as you get some keyboards and some choirs, you're done. You know, you got yeah. a fantasy album. See, my idea is so we got Patrick. Well, we'll put Patrick on the keyboard. Okay, I'm vocal, so I'm gonna grow out my hair. I'm gonna be fucking head banging. Yeah, Beautiful, yeah. dude. I want you twirling. Okay, so you're I'll grow back out. Yeah. And then what I want is I want to get Brandon Sanderson. I want Brian Sanders <laughs> on the stage with with Rhythm of War opening just preaching out things from the yeah. Ronnie chapter. He just, he just, yeah, he just, <laughs> the spread yeah. only interact. And like, he just, he just reads the book as it's we Fabriel perform. science, dude. Yes. And I'm just like, spread, spread, spread. And <laughs> everyone's down, 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 down. Spread. glory spread above our heads. Come on. Can yeah. you feel it? Come on. Oh, dude, yeah. I feel it. <laughs> dude, There's electricity in the air. Christian. Or destination. <laughs> <laughs> like that's what we need. Oh, dude that's the fucking name yeah oh dude <laughs> oh, I, I don't know i like the open council the open council is just a bit more journey before destinations our album <laughs> oh my god yes strength of four weakness like you could just keep going out on the shattered plains <laughs> Man, that, that's that's, that's more of a yeah. stone hall right there that the was more of a 90s one. grunge yeah. that's like <laughs> That was like Godsmack vibes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Stand alone>. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, we're doing it. We're hitting a massive niche right now, but I just I'm loving it. I mean, I I if if people don't like it, I don't care. I mean, the chat is like we still got the same amount of people, so we can't I be think doing. We that went bad. up. Oh, dude. I People heard this platinum record. Yeah, it, it, no, Noel, <laughs> you're mistaken, my friend. You say this is gold. No, it's platinum. <laughs> we're going platinum oh okay. what's the thing in this one it's um it's atm it's mm. atm baby yeah let's get let's get really nerdy but yeah dude i think i think there actually is a massive crossover between metal and uh fantasy for sure oh there definitely is i mean it, it, but both things are kind of epic right i mean i i've heard mm -hmm. so many songs when i listen to 
uh, to metal that feel epic. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that span for because there's like some parallels, right? On a on a metal album, you can do a 12 minute song and and that's great. Yeah, just like we read a giant book. We're like on the fringes of society. <laughs> like metal is kind of outcast. Same with fantasy reading, and it just you know it kind of works. Yeah, and then there's the people who like. Like, okay, here's actually a really good one. So who is, because like Brando Sando is now very mainstream, right? Like he is the mm-hmm. fantasy genre when you go to the bookstore. Who yeah. is the metal band equivalent for the Cosmere? I think you already gave one answer before, mm-hmm. but. I'm, I, think- well, I said like Dragon Force is like the vibe of the Cosmere because it's yeah. just like happy times with swords, you know? Yeah, <laughs> like, like I feel like, life. I feel like, uh, <laughs> I feel like Metallica is Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah yeah it's like or, or even like maybe iron maiden because it's a bit more like a yeah bit more like like you know held in high like, regard and they like yeah. tad williams is like ronnie james dio where like yeah. he doesn't get enough credit <laughs> dude this is so great for this what he so did great. for the genre okay yeah. yeah it's so true so who's george rr R. martin george rr R. martin is like guns and roses no, no. Oh, dude, I'm sorry. No. Guns and Roses. <laughs> well, I, I had a reason. I had a reason. Okay, what's so the reason? He kind of uh phased out the end of hair metal. All right, George kind of mm. phased out, yeah, right? And they never finished Chinese democracy in time. <laughs> okay, I I get that. But they're not metal, so they're like count. sweet child of mine. Yeah. <laughs> That's in... Storm of Swords, yeah. Yeah. No, no, dude. No, no. I think like George R. R. Martin is more like like Lamb of God. Do you know them? Okay. Like they that redneck in. metal. They, they yeah, and they like made screaming a bit more mainstream, but like you know, it was like the bridge. You can't deny the impact they had on the genre. Like George. Like George. You know what I mean? Whether you like, like they were my stepping stone into heavier stuff. I went from Metallica to Lamb of God, and then I could go to even further. Oh my you know? god, yeah. And then like White Chapel's like Abercrombie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like as dark as it gets. Which fan series would be Dream Theater? Uh, Dream Theater is dope. Well, I would Dream, say, you know, you could say that as like a, but like because they're so like their fan base is so like you don't get it. Maybe they're like Malazan or something. Oh yes, <laughs> Dream Theater's Malazan. Okay, yeah. gatekeeping all day. Uh, like Dream Theater and Opeth. Andy Smith just threw his Gardens of the Moon book at the <laughs> fucking monitor. He said, "These sons of bitches." Uh, <laughs> my mom says she likes Sweet Child of Mine too. You got a problem, yeah. Christian? I mean, every everyone's mom likes sweet child of mine. <laughs> let's be honest. Well, I am the sweet child of her. So, oh, uh, see what I beautiful. did there? See what I did there? Um, so <laughs> we we need to get the the Cosmere though. So what it's is tough? Um, it's tough because it's got to be like because mainstream and metal like don't. It can't be too technical. Too, yeah, it has. Is it Avenged Sevenfold? Yeah, because like. Because there is the technical elements to Event Sevenfold, like there is skill in that band, hundred yeah. percent. But they've they've consistently like simplified, yeah. In some and I, ways. Yeah, and I don't know if that's a fair way to to classify Brandon because I actually think yeah, he's let's better. Not, let's not discount Brian Sanders. Okay, yeah, Brian Sanders is a great <laughs> author. Um, I feel like he's one that got a lot of hype before his technical abilities caught up. Hmm. So yeah, what metal band yeah. would we consider that's better than they get credit for? How about that? But still huge mm. and, and too big at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> that is a tough one. Like I'm trying to think of like the metal band that everyone kind of I, agrees on. They're not really metal. Oh, but yeah. I got it. Oh yeah. Lincoln Park. Yeah, oh my God. You've got it. Like they're, you've nailed it. They're you've Lincoln so Park. nailed it. It's Le- Lincoln Park is the Sanderson of like alternative metal. And yes. I would, I would say, um, <laughs> like, <laughs> <I'm sorry>. <laughs> hey, dude, section. does Malazan have a Fortnite skin? That's just my only question. <laughs> That's all I'm going to ask you, Andy. I'm just going to leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Don't you have a movie theater to run or something? Oh. <laughs> uh. It's Friday oh, it's... night. The, the the theater should be packed. We're oh, all it's God. we're all it's all just amongst friends here, guys. Yeah, this is yeah. And, and he is all in good fun, even though his Oathbringer review is scathing but amazing at the same time. Oh, I like I liked Oathbringer. 
I, Andy, I still liked his review. Of Andy Raspberry. shits on Sanderson like no one else, and you got to respect that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trust me. I, I I respect anyone that's willing to endure the comments. Um, My favorite moment with Andy was like, he did like all his uh, Stormlight reviews, and then when the hype was at its peak for Rhythm of War, everyone's pumping up Rhythm of War stuff. <laughs> his thing is like, why I DNF to Rhythm of War? Like, why I'm not reading it? I was just like, dude, respect. You're going into the lion's den, you know? Oh, Christian, we've hit a new low here on the chat with nuts. My kids thought I came here for a Fortnite oh, chat. No. <laughs> Oh, my but you're God. the one who marketed it that way, you bastard. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> hashtagged Fortnite. People probably came in here thinking they were going to get a V-Buck handout. <laughs> <laughs> How about a specific song as theme songs for specific characters? Oh, I'd love to do something like that. You know, um, actually, do you know Elliot, Elliot Brooks, uh, the booktuber? She did like a an amazing violin violin duet for like Ellen and Vin, and it's sick. Oh, it's if only really the good. relationship was worth writing music about. <laughs> no, that's really cool. I like when people bring their other talents into BookTube and like, like for instance, like you were into photography, right? And yeah, um, it clearly shows with the the shots that you take and the care that you take with like all your editing and whatnot. And I think that's really right. cool. Now, for me, I came from pro wrestling, so it literally <laughs> doesn't cross over at all. But we should make it cross over. You I know should what probably I mean. start putting books in headlocks. I think you should. I think we need some sort of wrestling skit in your like. It's it's. I'm dying for it, dude. I mean, all this we're still with the video problem. on your channel. It's still there. If you saw it by all this, it's still there. You know, you got a but, reputation to maintain. Though that's the uh, those are the Easter eggs. Yeah, you know, if if someone actually makes it to the bottom of the list, they can see yeah. me in uh, you know my tights running around <laughs> with a spray tan, body slamming yeah. folks from Canada. Uh, shout out to Canada. Always love that. <laughs> shout man. out to Canada. Shout out to it. Canada. What's good with it? Um, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Chris said, I thought Andy's reviews were nice. I, <laughs> yeah, actually, like he was very fair. I thought, um, like, he, he approached it in a good way. He was very honest, but like, he was still shitting on them. You know what I mean? Like, he shot on them so nicely. Yeah. I was talking to Chris about like how whenever I have like a negative opinion of a book, sometimes I have to like shoot three or four times because. Like, I always want to be respectful of people, but like, yeah. I mean, I always, my first take is like really crude where it's like, oh, this, oh my was, God, this was ass, you know? And I'm like, eh, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> my first take of the great hunt review is brutal. I, I basically would... tore it to shreds and I thought I can't, I like, I need as much as like, I felt all those things. I needed to present it in a, in a better way because I, mean, I don't think it's that useful. Well, you know? Yeah, and you're not writing off the series, right? Like, if you wanted to burn the bridge, you could. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I could go nuts. Yeah. Me, me and Chris get uh, a lot of people like, oh, you hate the Wheel of Time. And I'm like, I don't really hate the Wheel of Time. It's just, it's a, it's complicated. I find it the most frustrating thing yes. I read. Yes. It frustrates me. And, and part because of the I'm reason, just like, be better. Come on, like, you can be better. Well, part of know? the reason why it's frustrating is because you know that you're going to have to talk about it. And you want mm. to collect your thoughts in a way. And sometimes, like, it's a mood thing. With that, with that series, yeah. um, there's sometimes where it just puts me in a bad mood because of the way the characters interact with each other, mm -hmm. and I think that's a pretty valid um, reason. But it's really hard for people to accept that because they didn't feel that way. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's, it's a fine <laughs> yeah. I like the red speak with your chest. Yeah, like and like let's be real though. My great hunt review is still mostly. Um, I focus on my criticisms like 90% of the video. Yeah, um, yeah like we could but, go into a wheel of time rant here. Well, here's the thing. So here's one thing I will say. I don't I, I thought your your great hunt review was awesome, actually. And if people will always pick up the thing they don't like about the review. Like whenever I said I didn't like swear words in Way of Kings, it's a 23 gush review of Way of Kings. Yeah. And people uh, uh, like just leached on to that 20 mm -hmm. seconds. And out of the 500 comments on the video, over half of them are about that. And it's just like, People are going to be upset about whatever. So yeah, and especially Stormlight and Wheel of Time fans—they're brutal, you know. Yeah. If you don't like their book, that's why I got so much respect for Andy because he, you know, he said it. Good on him. Yeah. Tugs braid. <laughs> so <laughs> so I'm yeah. only just getting into the braid tugging section of uh, Wheel of Time. It's large. Uh, Andy's reviews are what like a fair fight, but at the end of two rounds, it still gets a Mortal Kombat fatality. I feel like <laughs> it's true. The thing about Andy is he's so articulate. That you feel like he's just destroying your intellect, <laughs> like your, your intellect, as you're also trying to understand why he hated a book you liked. You know, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, I, I like those things. I like, I like, 
I actually really enjoy hearing people have negative things to say about Sanderson. I don't know why I enjoy that. Um, it just keeps the hype in check. Not. Yeah, exactly. Because you, yeah, I love when Jimmy shits on Miss Vaughn to me. It's a great time. Like, I know, like, I know how deeply flawed Sanderson is. I just really have fun with it. So, yeah. well, like, I'm not saying he's a bloody literary genius. I think he's like a world building and plotting genius, you know? Yeah, I think it's also you have to come at things balanced, right? Like, yeah, uh, you know, like, I mean, I treat Germ how a lot of people treat Sanderson, and I yeah. accept that he has flaws in his works and stuff. Now, does that mean I go out and watch every single a Game of Thrones review? No, no, sure don't. I'm too close to it at this point. Um, but it, it's one of those things where you, I think if you approach things level headedly, um, you can come at anything with with at least the perspective of why someone loves something right and you're one of my favorite people to talk to about the cosmere not just because you're so knowledgeable but you're you're very reasonable uh like we yeah. have very different opinions on Mistborn and lift and stuff like that but we have a good time when we talk yeah and i wish that and this is just a fandom thing this isn't a cosmere thing or anything like that but like there are mm -hmm. people who just can't do that yeah um, yeah some people can't bridge that gap and you don't have to if you don't want to uh it's yeah yeah Free, free life for you to do whatever you want with it but uh and i was actually gonna ask you this like do you follow any booktubers that you don't agree with like 50 percent of the time yeah <laughs> me too yeah like uh, i love almost I love every uh, like a lot of booktubers i don't agree with to be honest mm -hmm. um like i know we're talking about andy a lot but like andy like w with his like i was very new to booktube so like seeing his like st like negative stormlight reviews well, like, I was like, oh, people don't like this. Like, it's my first taste of like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Excuse me? Yeah, but I was like, he's explaining it so well and he's presenting it really well. I want to see what, from from his perspective, I want to see what he thinks of other things. And yes. I, I always like to see if they don't like something, where we cross over, mm -hmm. you know, because doesn't Leanne not like uh, Brandon either? Uh, no, I think she, like Mistborn, didn't like Stormlight actually oh yeah she doesn't like stormlight that's yeah, right she but she loves first law you know yeah, so i find it interesting because i still cross over mm -hmm. and chris as well like he basically i think he doesn't like any sanderson yes correct so but we i feel like our wheel of time thoughts are pretty like similar yeah. so it's it's like not not everything is so black and white like yeah and uh, yeah, and like, nothing nothing is black. And white, I'm not right? going to turn someone off because they disagree with me about the bloody Cosmere, you know. Yeah, and I think that's important. And like I told Chris, I said I feel like uh, my re I could not really do a good job of recommending Chris books because of like just our taste and stuff. But Chris recommends me books that I love. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, mm -hmm. it, 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 and I mean that's not an absolute right. Like I'm sure I can make some recommendations to Chris that he would really enjoy. But mm -hmm. it's kind of fun figuring out people's palettes and and seeing what they like. I yeah. I love it. And I get motivated. Like I want to find something we connect on. And yeah. sometimes you don't. But like. I'm like, okay, maybe they'll like this, you know? Yeah. And I like another thing. I actually agree with this fires of heaven comment. There's so much great talking. There's so much naive. It's awesome. But well, I shouldn't say it's awesome. I, I did like naive. For the I first actually time. quite like naive where I'm at. I Dude, me and popular. you both said that. And it's funny because I've had so many uh, wheelies tell me they're like, oh no, like you can't like naive that early. And I'm like, no, I feel like she's the only one that's justified in her frustration. So I really yeah, like her. She's like kind of pissed off like me. I'm like, yes. <laughs> It's like get, honestly, get annoyed at these people. It's like Fitz. Like a lot of people are like Fitz is so annoying. I don't find Fitz that annoying. He's a kid. Like mm. he's not like overtly childish, right? Like I will say, I think Lyft is like overtly childish, right? Like that Lyft is like abrasive. It's on purpose. Yeah, it's on, and and that's fine. But like, it, like so, I can see why that's such a polarizing character. But like, people act like as if like Fitz and Simon also from Memory Star and Thorn, they pretend like they're kind of that obnoxious and i was like they're really not like they're mm -hmm. growing up you know and that's kind of how i feel about naive it's like yeah she's frustrated she's kind of closed-minded and she's a control freak but i understand yeah. why she's all like that in every aspect yeah so. yeah yeah she just works for me as a character she's probably one of my favorites yeah absolutely uh reading is so intensely personal that you are literally not reading the same book so differing opinions help you understand the other person more than the books you're discussing that is very well said yeah, I think Derry has nailed it there. Derry, I am so glad that uh, you know you came around this channel because uh, I really appreciated all the input you put in for the live ship discussion that we had, and uh, you've been really active tonight. So I appreciate you being around. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Sarah says, I wonder what book or series people <laughs> consider their guilty pleasure. What's your answer? Uh, I'm not guilty about any of it. I'm very happy. There it is. About what I'm reading, you know? Let's go. You can look at my bookshelf. I don't care. <laughs> I I'm like not, it. Yeah. It's just like, I don't know. Maybe they'll be a bit disturbed by like some of the manga. It's like a bit gr- gory. Well, yeah, like, you, you definitely have had some pushback on that, right? Oh, that's just more like what people want to see on my channel rather yeah. than like the, the, the content of the books. That's um, fair. But it's just like, <laughs> yeah, like in the horror manga, I'm reading some of the pictures. I'm like, I can't just like show this to somebody and be like, hey, look at this. So it's like. It's like when some you meet someone, you're not going to show them the new White Chapel song, like you said. It's like you got to you got to ease them in. You got to ease them in. <laughs> um, I guess like I get some, I'll get some hate because the Cosmo is so it's becoming so mainstream. Mm-hmm. Um, it felt kind of new and unknown when I started, and I was like, oh, cool, I'm like discovering this new thing. But it's like the biggest thing, so I guess you could say like, oh, I'm like a casual. Actually, if you're into the cosmic, it's really funny you say that because, like, if you didn't do the booktube thing, if you didn't go on Goodreads and you just read the Cosmere, mm-hmm. it would feel like such a personal experience. And and the reason why I know this is because so I was at jujitsu the other night, and I'm getting changed in the locker room. I'm you know suiting up and talking to somebody. He's asking where I've been because I was out for a year from COVID, and I've just gotten mm-hmm. back now. And there, I was like, yeah, I've been growing my YouTube channel. And they're like, oh, I remember when you started, you had like 150 something. Like, yeah, I'm at like 2000 now. It's crazy. And he's like, oh, wow. The guy next to me goes, oh, what kind of books do you read? And I'm like, I've never met this guy. And I just go, oh, I, I like fantasy. And he goes, oh, if you like fantasy, you should check out this one dude. His name's like uh, Brandon Sanderson. And I'm just like, <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> he's like, yeah, he has like a Stormlight Archive or something. I just started reading it like last year. It's phenomenal. It's really good. And I was just like, he has no idea it's the biggest fantasy author in the genre yeah, right now. Yeah, he has you know what I mean? no clue. Yeah. What a cool thing, though. That's such a personal thing for like he probably holds it like near and dear to himself. I thought yeah. that was so cool. And that was me when I first read Way of Kings. Because like at the time when I read Way of Kings, it was like one video by Daniel Green when he was mm-hmm. like 12. And like that was it. <laughs> <laughs> like that was all that there was about it. So it's like, wow, this is like so untapped. Yeah. And now it's like everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. So it, I guess that's a kind of a guilty thing because I look like a cosmic casual. That that but. is my my answer is the Song of Ice and Fire because uh, as soon as I say that, mm. people roll their eyes. Um, yeah. Oh, Game of Thrones. So yeah, like? I've been yeah. very upfront about how much I love it though, and it's funny when I did my Way of Kings, I said that I felt like when I read Way of Kings, I could start to see why people mentioned Sanderson with with uh, the greats, and I said George R. R. Martin, Ursula and Tolkien and whoever else I mentioned or didn't mention. And people were like, comment like, Oh, just so you know, George is actually not the greatest. And I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> like if I say, you know, I'm the greatest writer of all time, it's subjective. Right. Yeah. So I've had so many, like push so much pushback, which is fine. I'm still going to say it cause it's true, but there is like a little bit of a guilty pleasure where I'm like, Oh, people might think that that's all that I know. Yeah. People come in with preconceived ideas. Mm-hmm yeah um they sure do yeah i'm i'm so early into reading like in the grand scheme of things so i feel like i can get away with a lot because i of course i'm gonna start with the big boys you know and then i'll delve into the other stuff yeah that's why i haven't done any like uh, i shouldn't say any but i do very little and have cut off uh advanced reader copies unless if like joe abercrombie if i get one from him or something right i'll definitely do that oh yeah Yeah. or tad williams or something but yeah uh like I, I need to catch up still. Like I, I've read 50 yeah, books last yeah. year and I'm about at, th- I'm at 30 right now for this year. So I'm probably going to hit, you know, maybe 60 this year if I'm lucky, but uh, I still, ha- I haven't read name of the wind yet. I haven't read red rising. Uh, That's what I mean. You want to hit all the classics first, right? Yeah. You just, wanna you want to do the pillars of the genre. That's why I did. We- That's why I started wheel of time. That's the whole purpose because I want to see the foundation before I pick up like a new indie. Thing. Yeah. And, and and I have sprinkled some indie stuff in there, and I really like yep. I like testing out some self published stuff. I'll tell you what, uh, Sword of Booker's Kaigen, Cold, right? Sword of Kaigen, one of the best books I've ever read. I love it. Can't, I really want to get a copy of that. It's just hard to get. I'll mail I'll mail it to you. Oh, dude! I got Beautiful. I got a paperback, man. I got a paperback. I'll mail it to you. Uh, <sighs> that's how much I liked it. I read it for free on Prime Reading, and then I bought the paperback. And oh now she announced she's going to write more books. So in the series or no, it's going to be totally different. But honestly, mm-hmm. I just loved her approach to writing. She did everything so much differently. Like mm-hmm. even the way the story structured is much different than a lot of the other stuff I've read. And I was really glad that I took that risk. And um, 
I just finished uh, book two of the combat codes, which is a self-published. It was in the SPFBO or however the acronym goes. Mm-hmm. And I liked book one. I thought book one was fun. Had a lot of jujitsu in it. Martial arts kind of oh, beautiful, kind of like a, um, I don't know. I had like a martial arts film theme almost. Kinda, okay. Kind of a, a basic story of a chosen one, whatever mysterious background. But then book two, mm-hmm. you know, I I'm so impressed. He like branched out the story now has multiple POVs instead of one. And I'm like, wow, this is like something not a lot of people have, you know, got into. It's not thousands upon thousands of people reading this. Mm-hmm. And it's like, this would be really cool if it blew up. And I could see how it could be an attractive series. Apparently, it's very like uh, Will White's series that people love uh, that I haven't read. But right. Um, so I, I would like to branch out and do these, you know, advanced reader copies or book ones of these unfinished series. But it's just like, I got to get through the mainstays, the big yeah. cornerstones of of the genre at least that's how i feel and i know you do too yeah well I, at least i'm much more attracted attracted to those at first i might not finish them all like oh yeah i'm very worried that i'll dnf wheel time like i'm like i kind of feel like i will or it'll just take me a long long time that's where i'm at i'm not rushing it i'll read it when i when I yeah it. yeah yeah it's just there it's yeah. just there it, it ain't it ain't going anywhere um, Chris Bookish Culture says Stormlight is the only series where I, uh, like I run across people in my real life who have read it. Yeah. And I think that's how you can tell mm. it's it's major. It's yeah. Really anything major. Sanderson, you might run into someone who's like, oh, yeah, I know Mistborn or whatever. Yeah. yeah. It seems like Stormlight for me. It seems to be like whenever I find people, they're like, right. no Stormlight. Oh, um, okay. Derry says, question Where do you place Discord? I've only read Mort, which I have a review filmed and it'll be uploaded in the next two to three weeks. Um, I, I, I've only read one book. But he I, he's like a pillar. Like I can see why he's one of the most influential authors ever in the genre. And I think Christian, I think you would really like Terry Pratchett. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's short. It's it's cutesy. And it has a lot of charm. A lot of charm. Yeah, man. I like that's another massive series who that has been recommended. Yeah, I'm not worried about. I like the fact that there's arcs in it. Mm-hmm. Like I can just read Death's Arc, uh, which mm-hmm. is what I'm doing now, and then I can switch to Guards, Guards, Guard, and do like those four, five, six books, whatever it is. And like I like I can jump in and out, like, and they're not mm-hmm. super personally interconnected, where it's like the Cosmere, right? Yeah, I like the fact that they're shorter books too. That's always that's always a plus. <laughs> um, Jim Roberts is was coming with some truth. Says Germ is objectively a genius, and anyone who thinks otherwise is kidding themselves. Agreed. <laughs> yeah, you will have no arguments with me. Agreed. It's the thing where he got too popular, and you know, you get bad takes. Yeah. And, and he, you know, everyone has flaws. So, yeah, uh, Harry Potter close to chest. I know that's a lot of people's quote unquote guilty pleasure, but there's so much nostalgia there. It's hard to say. Yeah, that. I have incredible nostalgia with it. Uh, yeah. Valent and Balk says Red Rising is epic as fuck. I agree. Isn't that Alex's favorite? Yeah, series? I haven't even read it. And I agree because <laughs> I, the enough people and this is another nice thing about BookTube. Then you find BookTubers that you click with mm-hmm. and you know if they like something that you're gonna like it especially if they describe it in a way that you've heard them describe other things mm-hmm. um and i feel like red rising is gonna be an absolute smashing hit with yeah me. a lot of people have told me to read that too as soon as i finish either dark tower realm of the elderlings whichever one's first i'm rolling into red rising so i'm actually really excited about that i am stuck in wheel of time book four i feel you um it's the biggest reading slump i've had in almost a year <laughs> same exact thing happened to me man it's yeah like there's book. more exciting books that i'm reading like mm-hmm. so much more exciting like if i had to pick up the heroes or the dragon reborn it's the heroes every time and this is my problem i'm just finding books that click with me more yeah so it's not that i didn't think it was a decent book or something but like i got to the point where like it wasn't clicking with me anymore and i had to put it down after so i, I finished book four and i was like oh this is the book everyone says like you're either sold <laughs> or you're not and i was like i'm not sold uh, I had felt like it had declined since the great hunt a little bit. And I took started reading book five, took a break. And then I just a year later now just read book five. And I think I'll maybe wait another year to do book six. To be Yeah. Honest. I think if you need validation on like stopping at book four, look at Patrick's review on <laughs> Goodreads. Yeah. I it mean, is. It is good. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it, I, if it's causing you to go into a slump, I, I say put it down. But that's just my personal opinion because I always want to be reading something. I, I get too much value out of my reading time um, to let something. Yeah, you're like you can't force yourself to like everything, so just read what you enjoy. Yeah, and don't let anyone tell you either. Like they're like, oh, you know, you have to finish Wheel of Time or something like that. I, I don't, mm. I don't subscribe to that at all. If people who, you know, they say hot take. I don't like Lord of the Rings. I'm like, that's totally fine. Yeah, I, 
I again, know. I can see that as well, you know. Yeah, and another people I, I've also heard people say, uh, hot take, I like the Lord of the Rings movies more than the books. I'm like, I get it. They're the best movies ever made. So mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no like I'm I think a lot of people prefer the movies over the books. I think a know? lot of people think that you're like as a book reader, they're like, Oh, he's gonna push back. I'm like, nah. Nah. I get I mean it. the books like the content is there, but I feel like reading them today it's hard compared I agree. to uh, it can be, yeah, especially if you're not in the mood for it. Good night, mom. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I love that she rocks up for all the streams. It's so my, nice. My mother has been my biggest fan um, my entire life. Any crazy dreams that I've chased, whether it be wrestling or doing this, uh, she's she's always backed me. She always encouraged me to read, too, and so did my dad. And I'm very thankful for that. because Oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah, there's a lot of times the only thing I had was a book. So uh, those were the times where I got to kind of escape yeah, I think we've all had that experience, especially for on BookTube. Yeah, are we've you had a, that moment? Are you an escapist reader? Like, do you major? Do you like, yeah, major. Yeah, like that's when I found Stormlight. I'd moved overseas and I had I didn't know anyone, and I was just like, "This book will be my friend. <laughs> I will live in this book." And then yeah. that's what happened. So that's probably why why I've stuck with it. You know, because it just came from a once in a once in a lifetime place. I think, yeah, I think that happens to a lot of people. And, and for me, like I could get lost in Westeros. I could open up any of the books right now and just dive in and be right there with the characters next to them, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. I felt such strong escapism with that series actually. Mm -hmm. Same. And I think, you know, we talked about it earlier and I, so I won't harp on it, but we talked about like the, uh, the fact that he laid out the land and the land actually like plays into the conflict and the positioning and stuff like that without being boring and I yeah. think that that's just like one of the reasons why it's so immersive. And I feel that way now with Rum of the Elderlings, now that I'm into the third trilogy, about to finish up the third trilogy. Like, I feel like I belong in this world. Uh, mm. the Six duchies. It's really cool. It's such a good feeling mm -hmm. to finally feel like settled in. You're like, OK, I, you know what? I, I'll give it to the Wheel of Time. Some of the places in Wheel of Time feel pretty cozy to me. Uh, mm. Some of them don't. The Eye of the World, <laughs> like literally the place where, like the uh, I is. found that I couldn't place myself. Could in not see whatsoever. Not, yeah, I couldn't picture that scene at all. It was felt very random. Yes, the end of that book. Yeah, I for as much as because I liked Eye of the World, I think a little bit more than you did, and I still think the ending was like kind of weird. Like it was like it just escalated out of nowhere, and because uh, you didn't know what the hell was going on, it kind of. It was cool. Like I was like, "Oh, cool things are finally happening," but I didn't really get why, <laughs> yeah, or where or how. <laughs> yeah. You know? uh, Headcan says, "I'm kind of nervous to start Wheel of Time. I think I put it off for a bit because there's some other books I'd rather read." Yeah, I I think it's much like how I'm treating Malazan. I didn't treat it like I am Malazan, but it's like when you go into a series that that is that big, you don't want to be in book three going, man, I wish I could have read that. I should go read that real quick. Like when you get mm -hmm. distracted, mm -hmm. I don't know if wheel of time is a, a series that necessarily lends itself to long breaks. Cause as someone who took a long break, <laughs> um, I feel it, like if you take a long break, when you're not enjoying it, it's kind of game over. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, I came back and I got through book five, but I, I still had a lot of the same. I, I was curious to see after a year of reading, if my opinions had changed, and they had not at mm. all, really. I so. think, yeah, I think we're just stuck with the Wheel of Time. I mean, I'm less, like, I'm less further down the line than you. I still have a, a bit more hope, but just mainly because book four has been hyped up so much. Yeah, and I might um, still finish it, too. I mean, I'm not, I I'm think not... the show will get us involved if it's good. If the show is good, we'll keep going. Yeah, I definitely think if the show uh, were to not do well, it would take off a lot of the pressure to want to finish it before the show is over. Yeah. Um, but, like, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, even though book five wasn't my favorite, uh, like, last week, I was kind of like, eh, I kind of want to, like, see what's up with, like, the fifth book, Lord of Chaos. I'm mm. like, eh, come on, pick up Lord of Chaos. I didn't mm. because I mm. don't have time right now. I'm too busy with other books. But, like, I did get a little bit of an edge. Where I was like, hmm, wonder, yeah. wonder if the first part's better, you know? Yeah, like, the plot has me intrigued. Yes. Like, the the huge character arcs have me intrigued. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, the page to page doesn't capture me as much as literally anything else i'm reading if i'm honest but that's only because i'm reading pretty like high regarded stuff like abercrombie yeah you know 
Yeah, and it, it, it all just depends on where I'm at, too, um, because mm. obviously it's a little bit slower than a lot of the modern fantasy. I see Jim uh, is in chat talking about it. Um, but, you know, Realm of the Elderlings is considered by a lot of people to be a slower paced series, and I don't have the same issues that I have with it. But it is a much different type of narrative, so it's hard to um, it's hard to compare the two, really. So, yeah, I, I definitely am not bankrupt on Wheel of Time. Uh, it's just one of those things where I am not going to force myself through when yeah, like if the it. if the feeling arises, you know, yes. go with it. And that's why I do with Fires of Heaven. I just went over the shelf and grabbed it one day and said, "Okay, we'll do it." You know? Yeah, I'm kind of like I'm kind of in that uh, in that in that mode with yeah, it. And, and you're also enjoying One Piece a lot. Yes, I am a lot, like a lot, a lot. Yeah. It's so good. It's just that's pure escapism for me because awesome. I know it, it. It's like I a lot of people said like the first hundred chapters is like the two rivers of uh one piece so it's like i'm not i'm not in, in into it um mm-hmm. to like know what it, the full thing is going to be like but it's very lighthearted. but it has magic and it has adventure mm-hmm. and if you just want to feel like you're exploring and discovering a world in a very fun way and making friends it's like the best and sometimes you just want to read that with like illustrations and stuff because you can't be bothered like the <laughs> long ass fantasy book you know <laughs> and i think that's totally valid that can be a very rich experience yeah i really think it, so that's pure escapism for me yeah it's funny because uh uh sarah says shout out to Arl Stein for being escapism go to for years goosebumps in oh, your street yeah. you know yeah um, classics I used, I used to read a guy named carl duker who wrote young adult sports books and the kids <laughs> were always from these really rough backgrounds and usually was based in seattle they're very formulaic Mm-hmm. I, those are some of the times that I cherish the most for my reading. Uh, and Dude, they're so that's like simple. a huge genre here in Australia. Really? Like the cricket book for like <laughs> mid, like, like 12 year olds, <laughs> like all the, yeah. all the rugby book. Like it's such a big thing. Yeah. And you know, yeah. those are some of my favorite things. Like for the longest time until I got back into reading, uh, whenever I'd have like, you know, someone asked me like, Oh, who do you like? Who's your favorite author? You know, if it wasn't Tolkien, I would say Carl Duker which is kind of mm-hmm. funny. Uh, Headcan says, Jimmy, where are you from and or live as in what state or if you're in a big city, which one? So I'm originally from Southwest Pennsylvania, North uh, West Virginia. Uh, I am not a redneck, uh, <laughs> but now I live uh, somewhere. I live near DC uh, in Baltimore. So that, I'm around that area uh, about, I think I'm like 20 minutes from Baltimore and like 30 minutes from DC. So I claim DC though, because Baltimore is, uh, I, I like Baltimore, but people seem to know where DC is on a map. <laughs> so yeah, we'll I mean, it's a bit more well known. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Patrick himself and slowly read praise Michael R. Fletcher's books to high heaven. I gave him a try and devour all his books. True hidden gem beyond redemption, Blackstone, heart amazing. I think, uh, that's the Conan barbarian or am I wrong? Am I way off on that? I, mean, I have no I'm, idea I'm if I'm honest. Uh, yeah, you know, that's somebody I've heard of. And I've also heard of David Gemmel. David Gemmel is an author that I'm definitely going to rip through next year because uh, a lot of people say he paved the way for like Abercrombie, John Gwynn. Mm-hmm. Um, very, very subversion of your typical fantasy tropes with still some of them in there, right? Mm, yeah. So kind of cool. Dude, we've surpassed our old time, I think. Yeah, mate. It's been almost oh, three dude. hours. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's that Red Bull. And it, and it doesn't feel like it, hey. No, it really doesn't. And I love it, taking up all of your day. Oh, dude. It's a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> um, one, the other bullet point, you would never guess what it is. But have oh. you heard? And spoilers for a Game of Thrones book one. Okay. We were talking about theories last time you were on. And you <laughs> said that your favorite theory is probably Jojen Paste. Yeah. <laughs> I found a new favorite. What's that? Ned Stark is a pigeon. <laughs> so you weren't bullshitting when you said I wasn't that bullshitting. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, again, this is going to contain a slight spoiler for book one of Game of Thrones. Not slight; it's a major spoiler for. Uh, I Game mean, of Thrones book one. It's already a spoiler that he is in fact a pigeon. But yes. No. <laughs> well, he is a pigeon, and I'm going to tell you why. So we know that the Starks can warg, right? Yeah. So oh, the okay. like theory is is that Ned, before he uh, comes to his end at the book. He worked into the pigeons that are specifically <laughs> called out of being at the execution site. And then the pigeon <laughs> that Arya snaps the neck of to eat 
when she's struggling to survive. No. Because why would a pigeon come up to a little girl? <laughs> okay. It was because Jimmy, it was Ned trying to get to his Jimmy. daughter to make sure she was okay, and Arya snapped Ned the pigeon's neck. <laughs> Ned the pigeon. And tried Jimmy. to trade him for a hot cake. <laughs> I love it. Canon. <laughs> I love it. That's cat. This is okay. I love it, but at the same time, this is what happens when a book doesn't come out for ten years. <laughs> this is exactly what happens. Yeah, someone said in the chat, they're like, if the book ever the books ever come out, it's gonna ruin the fandom. <laughs> Honestly, like I think it's thriving on how batshit crazy we're getting. It, so pigeons. it is interesting because clearly it goes a little too far, right? We all know that. I mean, um, I kind of love it, to be honest. <laughs> I kind of love this theory. Terry says, are you going to say the pigeon, Jimmy? <laughs> Thomas Bird's on the <laughs> He's so right, though. I'll kick the but shit out of him. if Ned was a pigeon, an well, honorable Ned pigeon. pigeon. He's well, definitely a pigeon. Sorry. Sorry. But that's let's that. be fair. Ned's, a... Ned's an idiot. Yeah. You know what? He's kind of dumb. And that's He's why he kind of the dumbest. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying they burned the wrong Stark. <laughs> they should have so burned should... Ned and left Brandon there. Mm. <sighs> do you think Brandon I mean, Start was kind of a Chad, wasn't he? Like he was a ladies' man. You know what? Like he 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 had a bit of a reputation, you could say. <laughs> you could say that. I mean <laughs> Ned's over when, here. Was... <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So wait, so Brandon's do you do you subscribe to the whole Brandon? the builder like time travel all that kind of stuff yes like how brand is every brandon mentioned in the Definitely. entire series yeah i think okay. so <laughs> i i think so brandon was I a total th- chat <laughs> <laughs> oh my god who was the karen of um who was the karen of a song of ice and fire that's the real question oh liza tolly oh yeah oh my god that's so on point yeah she's so annoying get throw her out the, the moon door throw her out the moon door i'm over it that was one improvement of the show, how they made the moon door like in the floor. I because like the moon door was actually a door in the book, like on the edge yeah. of the, the wall. Yeah, it was yeah. one of the things the show did do an amazing job of. Uh, I thought the veil was the most impressive set outside of King's Landing. I thought Winterfell mm. was really good, too. Um, I, I saw a post I think on Red King's Red. Landing was amazing as well. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Uh, I mean, really, let's be honest. The sets in the show were 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 tremendous. We I can't... mean, most of the show is bloody amazing. Yeah, if yeah. you take the first four seasons of Vacuum, it's probably the best TV show ever made. But yeah, um, I was one of those super fans who hated. Like, I'm gonna say this in a way that won't spoil people, but how they changed the line to like "only cat" to "your sister." I hated that so much. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of little things uh, like that, like that so me. unnecessary. But they're like. Because like it's the meme that everyone watching Game of Thrones doesn't know anyone's name actually. They're just like, oh, that's his sister. Oh, that's the redhead. No one knows. That's true. Yeah. So they had to be like your sister. I was like, oh, come on, come on, come on. I- iconic line ruined. Yeah. Someone uh, asked here in the chat said that their favorite character in the show was Sir Davos, and then they want the to Onion know Knight. how close was he to the books. I actually think pretty Davos on point. Is pretty on point. Maybe. Pr- Maybe the most faithful adaptation. I might say so. I think I think his the direction his story was going in the books is way more interesting, and they didn't know what to do with him in the show, so he's yes. just kind of there towards the end. Yes, but he's a legend, and at least and he was great. They didn't bastardize his character arc at the end either. Like mm-hmm. it, you're right, they kind of just. I think he has way more of a role to play. I mean, he's a POV yeah. in the damn books. Yeah, he fell to the sideline in the show. Yeah, he fell to the sideline, but at least they didn't like. They didn't do him bad, right? So yeah, like he's going off to a very interesting place in the world at the end of uh, Dance with Dragons, right? He's going to that island, um, with the unicorns. <laughs> What's yeah, that place called? yeah, uh, Skagos. Yeah, he's yeah, going yeah, Skagos, baby, unicorns. Yeah, isn't he looking for um the other Stark, the other kid? Uh, I can't remember. What well, Tommen? Is that his name? Tommen. No, yeah. no, Tom, Tom and is uh, the Lannister. No, yeah. Oh, Tom's, what's the other one? Brand's like the it's, little. It's Brandon Rickon. Yeah, yeah, Rickon. Isn't yeah, he yeah, looking yeah, for Rickon? Yeah, yeah he's he looking for Rickon. Yeah. yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, there are going to be unicorns. Like, yeah, yeah. Skagos has unicorns, hundred percent. Yeah, no, like apparently they it does. 
Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm not bullshitting it. for once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like to me, like when I heard that, I was like, that's that's bullshit. And then you see like an interview with George is like, yeah, there's unicorns on Skagos. And you're just like, well, shit. Yeah. Which makes me think we maybe we don't ever see Skagos. Like he says that. But yeah, like, if he, he says that, he probably it. doesn't care. Yeah. Now I am going to recommend everybody. I don't know if you've done this, Christian, but it, it, even if you're not super into Song of Ice and Fire, listening to George talk about writing like on youtube there's there's hundreds of the speeches on youtube amazing he has a conversation with stephen king that i think is like tremendous and then he has a conversation with robin hobb that's uh bro been broken up variously into like really small clips and you have to find them as they're uploaded but man some of the conversations that he's had at these panels are so interesting mm -hmm. yeah he the what like him talking about the books has been so fun to watch yeah. over the years and got me like really excited to, I, I was desperate to find another series like that's how we're here i think yeah. that's how a lot of people are into fan because they were burned by george so we got to kind of thank him because yeah. i feel like if wins came out i'd just be reading a song of ice and fire and that's it you know so if wins if they said hey christian wins is coming out uh, september 1st <laughs> what would you do uh i would say Oh god, that's tough, dude. September first, <laughs> I would drop everything. I, I, uh, I don't know, because like I'm really keen for first law. Um, I just have no rush. I don't have the rush factor whatsoever. I think I'd like to pretend like I wouldn't just punt every other book out the window, but I would. <laughs> it would yeah. be an instant. Now, I, I know what, you would. I don't know if I would reread books one, two, and three again. I would maybe just do feast, uh, feast and dragons. Uh, and I'm with maybe, you there. I'd probably do the boiled but, leather. You know, I, I don't know if I'd be bothered. Cause like at the same time, right? Like I know I'm, I'm shocking you now, but like at the same time, it's like, we're going to get wins, but I'm, I'm almost certain we won't get spring. So like, I, I don't have, uh, the motivation. I think mm -hmm. I would, I mean, at the very least it's a day one read for me and oh i'm gonna buy day one yeah i think the biggest thing is is the fact that um everything with euron is so i mean i could go into this but like there's a mm. lot of shit that's gonna happen and wins like wins is gonna be a uh a doorstop like it's gonna be so it'll big. be crazy you know what i would read i would reread you know at the end of dance where actually the characters from feast come back for like the last 200 pages maybe i'd read that that'd be cool I mean, it's nothing like it's I'm doing it an injustice, but I just have other things. But you've, like, you've also reread it a bunch, right? I've like, re I've read the whole series three times. So like, you know, a fourth time. I don't know. I mean, that's fair. And, and like, I could get away with not rereading it uh, with with how much how close with I like am. all the content we're watching on YouTube. Like, I, I know all the I know most of what I need to know. Yeah, And to be fair, like you've even told me, like, uh, you're not going to reread Stormlight every year. Like, there's no like, no. Because you're going through those books all the time. Yeah, I'm literally like going, th like looking through them for videos almost every day. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Chris Bookish Cauldron just dropped knowledge in the chat. I didn't know this, but Robin Hobb and George R. R. Martin share an editor. Yeah. Yeah, That's they do. Amazing. <laughs> Makes so much sense. Is it all clicking for you now? Maybe yeah. it's the editor who's like keeping this magic for you. Well, I'm telling you, man, like they, they really do. Um, they really do have something that, that is shared. And I, I'd like to explore that in a video more uh, down the road. Uh, mm -hmm. Uvo Zod said the channel Shade Diversity made a book accurate CG model Winterfell and it looks awesome. Yeah, I've heard that the show's Winterfell is nowhere near as grand as the Winterfell from the books. I mean, I've obviously read the books, but I didn't picture it so much. Um, and I know I that everything is much bigger in the books the iron throne is supposed to be way yeah. different right but i like yeah. what they did with the iron throne i think they did a reasonable like like they can't have i feel like if the iron throne was canon like it would look stupid you yeah know? I, um, I i i think it would look cheesy i agree yeah yeah i think it'd be much harder to do i, I like the simplicity of like the, it's iconic the shows iron throne you know yeah, and the it's simplicity really of the the magical and fantasy elements is why it was such a big hit, for better or for worse. I exactly. I, I clearly have some gripes with that, but it yeah. worked. <laughs> it did it work. Didn't work for as far as popularity goes. Uh, Jane Johnson is her name. That's the editor, and she mm -hmm. wrote a fantasy trilogy under the pen name Jude Fisher. I'm gonna have to check that out. Oh, that's cool. This is amazing. So I love doing this stuff. 
Oh, dude, sadly, I've got to, I've got to get going, man. Yeah, I, yeah, we're I, we're almost at three hours. I could literally talk. To I you mean, like I could keep going all day. This is wonderful. Um, <laughs> hey, man, thank you. Uh, there's a reason why you're my first repeat guest, uh, because I, I had that spoiler talk this week, and I was trying to set some other things up. A busy week, I said, who can I rely on? It's just going to be an easy. Can you be there? And it was you. I'm always um, available. Too. <laughs> and I, and I'm proud to call you uh, a friend. So, me uh, too, man. I'm super glad that you were here for this, and I want to thank everybody in the chat. Hey, thanks for hanging on. You know, this oh, was dude. Uh, consistently been legends in the chat. Time. Like yeah, we, uh, we kept consistent yeah, the whole time. It was great. I mean, I, mean, I think we had some good uh, discussion in, in chat. You've definitely propelled us into some pretty interesting conversations. So thank you so much for being here. And I hope you have a rest, uh, a good rest of your Friday night, Christian, uh, where you're at. I know it's day. So I hope you have a good day. Yeah. Um, thanks, and, man. And if you haven't followed Christian, you're crazy. Go subscribe. He just hit 10K. He's about to take off. You want to be there before he hits the moon. <laughs> okay. You got to be there before. So then you can gatekeep. Yeah. I was there. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I was there. Uh, <laughs> hey, thank you guys so much. Have a great night until I see you again. Be safe. Be good. And remember to always keep turning the